There we go. Do I hear myself? I probably do. Yep. yep. That sounds pretty accurate. That does sound like me. Okay. Starting in a few seconds. And... <laughs> this is going to annoy everyone watching the VOD. What's up, everybody? Hello, welcome to the stream. My name is Biendo. Uh, you are tuned into the Biendo stream of Monday. It is Monday, the 22nd of November. We've got the 2 2 slash 1 1, unless you're one of the US types, in which case it's 1 1 slash 2 2 slash 2 1. Uh, that's a fun date. Um, will we ever get one again? I don't think we will. Oh, 21 12 21. That'll be the last time you get that. Then maybe you, you could get away with a 2 2 1 1 2 2 next year but yeah dude we're gonna i'm gonna miss having years that uh that form wonderful palindromics because they're not gonna happen as often it's gonna be a shame but that's okay because i'm playing this video game you may remember this video game you may not i don't know but uh, in the last stream uh i got two more badges took on a bunch of other areas and caught myself a big ol' Snorlax in the end. Uh, and in this stream, it's gonna be my goal to try and let's get the remaining three badges. Let's call it a day. So, uh, we're here at Vermilion City. After clearing the Snorlax, which you gotta go all around to get the Pokey Flute, you can go into this cave. A bunch of Diglett popped out of the ground. That was shocking. Well, yeah, guess what Pokemon you can find in the Diglett route. The Diglett Cave. Wow. Yeah, the Diglett Cave is, um, I, I find it's like a, a pseudo-interesting kind of cave, because it exists. It's there in first gen. You can't access it until you get cut, um, and you also can't backtrack to where the entrance was until you've basically gone through it this way. So, it's interesting, um, I guess just like how first gen is laid out. It's a real... I don't know, it's a, it's a real enigma, and actually that's something that I might as well talk about just, just briefly, is uh, I had a funny conversation with a bunch of friends on, um, I guess, like, where Pokemon's design has gone. This seems like a real obvious Max Revive right there. But where exactly, like, Pokemon seems to be a franchise that's rather afraid of, like, leaving behind mechanics that it feels has, uh, I can't carry any more Carbos. Uh, it's a bit afraid of leaving behind those mechanics. Um, also, I've got a cut Pokemon on me, don't I? No. <laughs> That's a bit awkward. That's rather awkward. Well, I can talk to this guy and he's like, Wow, I'm glad to see you. You're the first visitor I've had in a long time. I'm super happy. Let me give you a little present. Oh, cool. Cool. That's a nugget. I can't give you any nuggets of wisdom, so that'll have to do. Well, okay. So, uh, yeah, I'm... I'm caught on the other side of this, uh, this cut tree, which is a bit rather awkward, uh, so I guess I gotta fly back and take someone who knows cut. <laughs> yeah, that's good fun. I love as well, like, this goes all the way, like, from Vermilion City here. It's a real short tunnel, and it goes north more than it goes, uh, west, and yet somehow it ends up over there, so, yeah. But, uh, no, we had a- we had a chat about, like, why- why does Pokemon not- or rather, like, why- Yeah, Pokemon seems to be a weird franchise because it really didn't want to leave behind, like, everyone's got a favorite Pokemon somewhere, and they're like, oh, we gotta support all the Pokemon and keep pulling them forward, and then, finally, Sword and Shield, they drew the line, but it's a rather late line. I feel like it needed to happen, not because it's like some Pokemon are worse than others, but just because, like, it is rather unmaintainable. And I'd prefer every Pokemon game to introduce a mixture of old and new Pokemon and just call it a day. Don't- you don't have to support all 873 old Pokemon, like... I mean, granted, then you get things like Pokemon Black and White, where you've got absolutely nothing that is the same between... <laughs> so, I don't know, it's a toughie. Um... I think the, yeah, I think the tough bit is, I guess, like, Pokemon are effectively kind of modeled after something identifiable. 
Um, and we don't really get as many, like, abstract kind of Pokémon, or, uh, as something that <laughs> some people probably will not want, and yeah, actually I agree, color swaps, because a lot of RPGs will do a, a palette swap Pokémon. Sorry, we'll do a palette swap enemy, and we'll just call it a day. So really, they only do like about 100 or even 80 enemies, or even way less. But they just palette swap it a couple of times, and have them at like various points significantly later in the game. And that's how you don't notice. Um, that being said, uh, it's been, what, two years since Sword and Shield came out? Has it been two years? No, it's only been one year. Yeah, it's only been one year, it hasn't been that long. Um, and thinking retrospectively, I'm kind of like, yeah, I mean, Sword and Shield is very formulaic. Like, if anything, it's probably the most formulaic Pokemon game out there. I just did the exact same thing again, but this time I've come around with my Pokemon that knows cut. So, uh, while I'm at it, let's just commit. Let's just go here. So, uh, I believe this guy is a trainer. Yeah. If you're walking tall grass wearing shorts, do you get nicks and cuts? Ah. Nope, oh, okay. Uh, but, yeah, yeah. I don't think this is really, uh, the Blendo rips on Pokemon Sword and Shield while he plays another Pokemon game that is totally alleviated of all the, the issues. But I think one thing that, um, at least I kind of landed on is that, yeah, Sword and Shield feels very formulaic, given that it is simultaneously the eighth generation of the, of Pokemon and also the first console Pokemon game technically developed by Game Freak. Every other one has been on a handheld and while the Switch is definitely a, a handheld in some regards, it's also something you can sit down and plug into a TV and it's generally a bit powerful and it plays a lot of traditionally console games. I don't know. It's got that and yet it seems to not do that much more than any other Pokemon game. And that's something I find is a little, a little disconcerting considering how many formula changes they did try to do in uh, Sun and Moon. Um, and at the very least, they kind of, you know, went all out on the Pokédex gathering in X and Y, I feel. Um, a night Clefairy coming out to play at Mount Moon, but not every night. Oh, okay. <laughs> sure. Uh, so this is Pewter City. It is a city. It's Pewter, I guess. Uh, what can you do here? I don't think there's really anything to do here. I think someone might trade you something. But, uh, yeah, this was... I mean, this was the... Well, it's not the first city. Viridian City is the first one in the first game. But this is where the first gym is in... Whoa. The Silver Wing, jeez. That's a key item. That's a key item and a half. Jeez. Okay. So, uh, yeah, for reference, the Silver Wing is, uh, basically the item that lets you catch, uh, Lugia. Now, if you're playing Silver, I believe you get the Rainbow Wing at this point, so you actually get the, the wing that lets you catch Ho-Oh -Oh instead. But I believe, yeah, like, you can catch... Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Hold on, let me see. Yeah, yeah, you can catch the other Legendary in this game. That's... Okay, one. Actually, let me take it back. This game is also rather weird, uh, and, I, and I thought this was actually, like, when we were talking about this, um, uh, one of my mates brought up Heart Gold Soul Silver, so the remake of this game, as some other kind of interesting game, um, as, I get, I guess, something to know, and I realized, this game doesn't force you to catch the Legendary. And I mean, first gen doesn't, because it doesn't have a Legendary to, to go out and catch, but... It, isn't that a bit weird? It's like, yeah, there's been a legendary. It's been sitting there for a while. It's level 40. I can go out and catch it. But I don't have to. Um, so, well, yeah. Nothing in the game really does that. Whereas you play Heart Gold Soul Silver, I am doing items. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Talking too much. Uh, Heart Gold Soul Silver, if anyone remembers uh, what happens in that, you actually have to... Um, you get this whole, like, kind of story going on with the Legendary of your game, and then you're led into trying to catch your Legendary. And that's actually, uh, like, I felt that was actually kind of something interesting, was what does any of these games do with a story? Because a lot of them, 
like the story doesn't take place in much of the game. It kind of gets brought up here and there, um, but I feel like a character like N in, in uh, the fifth gen games, black and white, he's oddly missing for a lot of the game, and particularly a lot of the early game. I think uh, perhaps the Pokemon games might be a bit nicer if it tied you personally into the story a bit harder than they do. So, I don't know, that's my two thoughts on it. Um, my two cents, rather. Uh, most Pokemon get drowsy if they hear a Jigglypuff singing. There are several moves that can be used, only while Pokemon is asleep. I can think of two of them. Snore and Sleep Talk. And I don't know if Sleep Talk's in this game. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. That's just me. But... Uh, this comes off the back of Pokemon Diamond... What is it? Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl? Or is it Shining Diamond Brilliant Pearl? I, I can't remember it anymore. I'm actually... I used to do this with, um, Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire as well. I used to always call it Omega Sapphire Alpha Ruby. So, uh... But yeah, that is kind of like... Yeah, Diamond and Pearl is actually when you can really feel the formula setting in really hard. This is a gym, by the way. You may you may know what a gym looks like. It's been a while. Uh, this is the... I believe the Brock is supposed to be the Rock-type gym. I think that's what he's going for. So, are you ready for this? Uh, sure, I guess. This is his only, the only guy in the way. But... What? Yeah, one thing I find kind of interesting is that, like, a lot of, in, in this guy's case, he used to have a sand troop, which isn't rock type, but I'll give him that, sure. Uh, this is gonna be a bit of a wipe of the gym, by the way, but, eh, <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Uh, so it's, it's fun that he comes up with a sand slash here. Yeah, unfortunately, um, this is, yeah, this is probably gonna be the saddest gym fight, because if you've got a grass type, or even to some degree, a water type, there's nothing. There's nothing that they can do against you. So, here comes Brock. Here he is. Wow, it's not often I get a challenger from Johto. I'm Brock, the pewter gym leader. I'm an expert on rock-type Pokemon. My Pokemon are impervious to most of physical attacks. You'll have a hard time inflicting any damage. Come on. Like... I mean, granted, this is my 14th gym. You know the routine by now, but it's just like, oh... Okay, man. Okay. So... Comes out with Graveler. It's level 41, it knows Defense Core, Rock Slide, Roller, and Earthquake. That's actually a really decent, like, all out, just gonna deal damage moveset, but Graveler's not the fastest. So, we'll call it a day. Sure. Uh, it comes out with Rhyhorn. Rhyhorn is, uh, by the way, Graveler is Rock Ground. Rhyhorn is Ground Rock. Know the difference. He knows Fury Attacks, Scary Face, Earthquake, and Horn Drill. Earthquake, again, is a little bit of a mean move, but... Not really the rest. And... He's also not too strong. Eh. Good on you, Chicky. Hitting level 46. Kabutops! Ah, now Kabutops, I love Kabutops. And actually, I love Brock's team in this, because this is exactly like how what a strong Rock-type trainer in this game should have. So Kabutops, it's Rock-Water. Note that we're type combo. And those Slash, Surf, Endure, and Giga Drain. That's a rather interesting moveset if you have been using a Water-type. If you're using a Grass-type, it means nothing really, but that's actually, that is a fun, like, moveset to use. Uh, he's got Onyx. Onyx is his classic. We all know it. It's, it's Rock Ground. It knows Bind, Rock Slide, Bide, and Sandstorm. Mm, the... <laughs> The bind and the bide is just classic. Um, Rock Slide's not too shabby of an attack, but yeah, again. <laughs> this gym would be a lot harder if it wasn't for the fact that every single trainer in this game is kind of the same level. And last one, he's got Omosai, the other fossil Pokemon from first gen. I believe you can't get either of them in this game. Um, which is a little bit weird, but sure. It knows Bite, Surf, Protect, and Spike Cannon. And it knows how to how to die. Thanks for the following, Talk to Can. How's everything going? Here we go. And that's that. That's Brock. I I use Razor Leaf Razor Leaf six times. Like, jeez, man. So, oh well. <laughs> 
I'm a bit upset. Your Pokemon will be even more powerful. Uh, cool. So yeah, that's that's bad. You should be studying. Nah. Well, maybe. But nah. I I mean I I make these streams just as like a oh here's just a casual my kind of stream of consciousness if you will. Uh, kind of kind of style stuff and uh, the vods are always available. I try and put them up the next morning. So if you miss stuff, don't worry. You can tune in later. But you can also tune in now. But I don't know. I reply to comments on YouTube, so that's all good. I'm gonna head east, because there's nothing really, like, I guess, monumental on the way. Uh, should I be using Heracross? He's gone. Ooh, no, I've got flying types to come up. Yeah, no, I've got, I've got one singular flying type. How about I'll, I'll go in, take out one, one bird trainer. It's not even a bird trainer. And then I can kind of go on the rest. Oh, I don't know what to do. So, all right. Uh, but yeah, that actually, that actually brings up a, a topic that I wanted to, to mention, which was, um, uh, it's been one year and, and a few days. I missed it a little bit <laughs> since, uh, the first stream that I tried doing, uh, in a mild revitalization of my YouTube channel. I had basically had my YouTube channel on, uh, on hold for like three and a half years, maybe even longer. I... Just kind of was like, hey, you know, not hey, you know, but uh, at some point I felt that the uh, the amount of effort I was doing into, and this is going to be a bit of a meta discussion, so this is all fun, um, but uh, the, the amount of work that you put into like making a YouTube video and trying to really kind of chase uh, like the Chuck of Conroy style and trying to chase that kind of popularity as well, I, I'm going to admit that. Um, I felt like a lot of that wasn't really worth it. I just was like, I, I felt a bit burnt out doing, uh, I guess, just YouTube videos and trying to do uh, stuff like that. Even if it was like as, you know, easily presentable as just here I am doing a Let's Play, uh, having to do stuff like studying for the Let's Play and then having like your notes on the side and that kind of stuff, it feels like if if you're that kind of guy who really likes getting into that, I think that's great, but I do like to play a bit more casually and just like a bit more, you know, oh, this is what I remember, this is what I don't remember, this is Pokemon, and I feel like you kind of have to Google something sometimes, like that's just what Bulbapedia is about, especially if you're playing us and you're not trying to play this blind. I'm like, I, I like, these are just small details that are escaping me, that's about it. Um, so, oh, really? <laughs> really? So, yeah, so I, I just put off the channel for a fair bit, and then, uh, I really wanted to, like, come back in, like, some different way, and that's why I had, like, a few videos on, on, uh, I guess, like, the video essay kinds of star things. Um, I had a lingering idea that I wanted to do, which was, uh, have a, I guess, a, like, a SoundCloud-style podcast, and, uh, I, I, you know it's always good when you think of the name before you think of, like, any, like, legit topics. So, uh, I thought of a name called, uh, My Two Coins, instead of My Two Cents. It was My Two Coins, because I'm a nerdy video game kind of guy. But I thought, one, it was a bit cringe, and two, uh, I had about, like, two topics that I knew I could talk about, and the rest was like, mm, I feel like I'd cheese it a bunch. So I didn't really want to commit hard to that. Um, but then I was like, hey, you know what, like, what I can do is just, why don't I just stream two hours a week? Because the stream is pretty unprepped, I don't have to really do much to do that, uh, and the, you know, I could be playing whatever game I want, and honestly, like, by the end of the year, it's like, hey, I've done maybe about 100 hours worth of stream, which maybe that, that is the case, uh, I haven't counted the hours. Uh, and so in doing so, I was just like, you know what, I kind of want to just like, you know, write some wrongs on the games that I have played. Uh, and therefore, this year I don't think I've actually played that many games that I haven't played before. And in fact, I've actually got the list of the games. I've played through 11 games in total, uh, plus Pokemon Gold, and then plus also Earthbound, which gets a bit of it here and there. But uh, yeah, there's been a total of 11 games cleared this year, which seems actually like rather impressive when I think about it. And cleared, I'm going to asterisk... Uh, Cruise in USA, but because I don't know, <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily say cleared, but uh, it's a start to finish with credits, and I mean that's fine. It was two start to finishes with credits, even better. 
the other games I played in the year, and this is a nice little uh, wind back, is uh, I played Super Mario Land 1 and 2 in a single stream. I then played uh, 10 streams worth of Golden Sun. I did two streams worth of Toy Story 2. Uh, I had a Rugrats game on PS1, that was the thing. Five streams of Super Mario Galaxy, two of Wario Land, two of A Bug's Life, two of Earthbound, 13 of Pokemon Gold. This is now 14. We're at 14. And uh, four of Tomb Raider and three of Muppet Monster Mania. Um, I also wanted to do a little bit of a look on just uh, YouTube analytics. Uh, and I know this is like kind of boring stuff, but it's also... Well, <laughs> that, that sounds so dismissive. But uh, one, one thing I found very interesting was where some of the analytics lay. So... The most viewed stream is the very first one, the Cruising USA one. And, uh, I thought, yeah, okay, that makes sense, but also, like, I'm surprised that the Cruise in the USA stream was the most popular one out of them. I don't know. But, okay. Uh, but that wasn't the one with the most watch time or impressions. That was the Toy Story 2 stream. And, and I'm like, that, uh, that was legit, like, my most viewed video on YouTube for the longest time. It was me playing Toy Story 2. So me playing it again just felt like... Oddly, I don't know, and I can't escape being known as the guy who played Toy Story 2. I don't even have, like, I don't even know if, like, people even watch that one anymore. There used to be a Pokemon Center. Oh, I didn't even... Well, I'm gonna cheese this. It's been a while, Bandao, since I thought I lost you about what I was lacking with my Pokemon. I can't read this. And we came up with an answer. Now we'll show you. So this is gonna be a bit interesting, because I don't have, uh... Yeah, I don't have Arcanine on me, and also... Also, Herc is definitely about to cop it, but... You know what? It's worth a go. Let's do it. Let's just get in there. So, uh, here's the rival. I forgot that the rival shows up the moment you walk in here. Um... Yeah, someone's gonna yell at me on that one. He comes out with, with uh, Sneasel. It's level 41, and he uses Fury Cutter, which is just not at all a good attack. Quick attack, a lot better. The other two moves he knows is Faint Attack and Screech. Uh, I feel like he'd probably have gotten a bit better if he got any of those moves out, but he didn't, so... He didn't. Uh, he's about to send out Golbat. Well, good thing Golbat is weak to Fluffer. He gets a, a go. By the way, his team is... Like, it is higher level. But it's not that much higher level <laughs> given, like what he was when you were at the uh, Elite Four. Right before then, he had his team, like, pushing up into the... pushing up to level 40. And then... I don't know, like, his worst in this team is 45. It's not too far off, so... His Golbat here knows Wing Attack, Confuse Ray, Bite, and Leech Life. And yes, this Golbat is still not Crobat. I guess he doesn't love it. I... that actually must be the reason. Um... He's got a pretty varied team, though, I'll say that. Uh, he's now got Magneton. Uh, Magneton is no match for no arm, boy. Actually, no, sorry, he's, he's, well, anyone is really, you know, he's no match for. Like, I look at his move list and I go, Sonic Boom, Thunder Wave, Thunder Shock, Swift. That's right, Thunder Shock. This is, I believe, the last time you fight this guy. And yet, Thunder Shock? Like, what is going on, bro? You don't even have Thunderbolt? I, that's a crazy... I can't even. I can't even. This is... It's whatever, so... Oh well. Oh, he's about to use Alakazam. He's coming at me. He's got the Alakazam. Who do we send out against Alakazam? Now we should send out Chicky. Yeah! Now, Alakazam might be a heavy hitter, because it is Alakazam. He knows Recover, Future Sight, Disable, and Psybeam. Uh, I, I guess I got my leftovers. Um, I'm just gonna go in with a... That's not Psykick! Hey, Bulbapedia, change your list, bro! There you go, we figured it out. We've got a, we've got a fix. Submit it to Bulbapedia, legit. This Alakazam knows Psybeam. Psykick, sorry. Yeah, that's okay. I don't think he's got anything against this. Uh, well, unless he gets a crit, but... Uh, 
trust the game to be lucky. It'll never happen. <laughs> well, there goes Alakazam, so... You had a good run. Oh yeah, Babbitt's getting a lot of experience in the back, whoops. Maybe you should have a, a go. Uh, wait, that's Typhlosion. We're going back to No One Boy. Alright, so here comes the starter, Typhlosion. It's level 45, it knows Swift, Smoke Screen, Quick Attack, and Flame Wheel. I don't know how many battles he's had Flame Wheel on, but, uh, I guess... I guess, yeah, sure. It's not the worst, but... I don't know, I, I feel like you'd be expecting some really rough moves. Ugh. Well, the smoke screen's gonna be a little annoying, but... That's okay. Oh, don't do it twice. It's not, it's not fun if you do it twice. And there he goes. Well, I did say I wasn't expecting it, but... Yep, alright, well... He's got one last remaining Pokemon, and I guess I can send Bab out against this guy. It's the Gengar! I don't think he's got anything to really wreck. But, yep, Gengar! It's got Shadow Ball, Curse, Mean Look, and Confuse Ray, and it's level 43, which is not... Yeah, it's not too high. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, I can just bite. I wish I had a crunch, but, you know, you take what you get. And I'll take the flinch and just call it a day, man. So, yeah, okay, this guy really had no hope at all. Oh well. Well, Rip Neville. I thought I raised my Pokemon to be the best they could be, but it still wasn't enough. You won, fair and square, I admit it. But this isn't the end. I'm going to be the greatest Pokemon trainer ever, because these guys are behind me. Listen, Beardo, one of these days, I'm going to prove how good I am by beating you. So he gets almost a redemption arc. He does kind of, like, realize that, you know, his team is not doing their best because he just never really believed in them. Uh, it's just that you've been doing it for longer, I guess. So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to give the experience share to Herc, because I feel like Herc is really needing it. Um, by the way, you're going to absolutely love me using... Do I have a full heal? I do have a full heal. <laughs> Might as well do that, and... Let's swap back out. Uh, I'm gonna go... Fluffer up front. I know it's the cave, and if you remember Mount Moon from the first game, it's a bit of a nightmare. I hate it. <laughs> but, in this game, it's awfully short. So, and also, all the Pokemon are level, like, 10. So if you're playing gold, there's a lot of Pokemon in here. You can find Sandshrew and Zubat. Actually, no, you can find those. Anyways, just Sandshrew. Uh, go up here and... Mount Moon Square. Don't litter. This is an interesting area that exists. Uh, there's no one in here. That's kind of weird. And the police are after me. Cool. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. There they go. There they go. <laughs> This rock looks breakable. Want to use rock smash? Sure. Uh, there you go. And a moonstone. So this is actually kind of neat. I believe this is a repeatable moonstone that you can get every week. If you come here at 8 p.m. on Monday nights, which is very conveniently when I stream, <laughs> then you can find these Clefairies here. And you can, you can rock smash the rock. And there's the Clefairies. Uh, this shop is available between 10 a.m. and 5.59 p.m. It sells just things you can get elsewhere, so it doesn't really matter. But I thought that'd be neat to kind of show off. Uh, other than that, the cave actually, like, ends here. That, that's it. That's Mount Moon. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling that I can win. Let's see that I am right. Uh, sure, yeah. Uh, so other than that, there's just a couple of trainers going east, and then I can fly back to Pewter and just keep going that way, because... <laughs> How have you not evolved this guy? Like, really? 
How have I got no better normal type attack than tackle? Maybe I should teach him strength. Oh, he did it. He did it. Oh, well. So, uh, last one on the topic of, I guess, just <laughs> meta YouTube analytics kind of stuff. Uh, I found kind of interesting that not only was the most viewed video the Cruising USA one, and the most viewed in terms of watch time is the Toy Story one, the top seven individual s videos by ad revenue, and I don't make a ton of ad revenue, it's legit, like, it's been like a dollar for the whole year, so it doesn't really matter much, but interestingly, the ones that have earned ad revenue, the top seven have all been Pokemon, and, uh, like, some of them are, like, the rather recent ones, and I don't know what's going on with that. YouTube is a strange machine. So... Well, all I can say is, I want to say thank you for being here at this very moment. And if you have been watching all the streams, then I doubly, doubly appreciate it. Like, you're legit a favorite person, kind of. Uh, and if you're here just now, uh, you're my second favorite person because you didn't watch all the streams. So you, get, you gotta do a bit of work to get to that number one spot, I swear. Uh, but no, yeah, it's, it's been good fun. I'm not looking for really, like, any kind of big, like, you know, popularity or whatever. I find that the best thing is just, hey, I'm enjoying it. I'm spitting out a bunch of opinions. Uh, probably irritating some people while I do it. And maybe someone out there appreciates it or wanna, like, wants to chat. Hey, it'll be all cool. So, yeah, no, that's... Yeah, that's the reason why I'm doing it, and I'm really enjoying it, so, and I'm gonna keep doing it. I don't know, we'll, we'll keep doing it for as long as it stays entertaining and I find relevant games to play. So here's the last person on the route. Um, I... <laughs> okay. Okay. Sure. Sure, whatever. Uh, I guess also, technically, yeah, like, I, I haven't looked into... Twitch's own metrics, so I haven't really been following, like, how many views or whatever. I don't really know how to how to measure the Twitch metrics. I'm not really looking into doing ad money or whatever on Twitch, because I know that gets in the way. Whereas, at least with YouTube, it's like, you can at least set the ads so that they don't stop you from watching the video right away. Like, that. that's my rule of thumb. Uh, but that being said, I guess there's more people following. Um, so I guess if that does result in more people tuning in, or at least knowing of certain games, hey, that's pretty cool too. And, uh, yeah, no, if you're a regular viewer, more to you. So, that's all good. And yeah, if I stream at a weird time, like, please tell me as well, because I'd love to stream at, like, a time that's really convenient for everyone. I just picked Mondays, because I was like, eh. Who, who likes Mondays? Uh, I actually, I'm pretty indifferent to Mondays. Um... Like, I, I don't mind it, I like, you know, start work and I go, like, oh, yeah, it's, it's Monday. I feel like I, I kind of, like, burn myself out on a weekend, though, so it's actually not too bad. Uh, yeah, by the way, you can't go left. You've still got a cliff that walls your entire way. But other than that, that is Route 4. Once you're there, I'm back in here. So I think the easiest way to, to continue going is to, one, Let's, let's do a heal, and then we'll fly back, switch the Pokemon again, and then continue heading south. Alright, so... Yeah. I've been enjoying playing, um... Definitely playing, uh... Pokemon. It's been... It's been a bit of a longy, but yeah, no, I, I've, I feel like, uh, and, and, and this is something after talking about just like the newer Pokemon games, it's like, yeah, you know, one thing I really love about this game in particular is its brevity. Like, it doesn't really waste your time. It's just like, hey, it's unapologetic, I can speak, unapologetically just the game where you go around and you catch Pokemon and you get badges and you... You know, you train up your Pokemon, you try and catch some, some new ones, and that's that. And, uh, I think what this game was, was... On the one hand, more of the same, but also more of the same, but much more refined. Much more, like, I guess, pure? 
and varied, I guess. Maybe not pure, that's not right, the right word. But you know what I mean, it's, it's very... Um, uh, like, I, I guess I, I'll play like games that try and chuck in way too many mechanics. I think this game ties the, the fine line with uh, not doing too many mechanics and still feeling like there's a fair bit of variety going on. Uh, even if it is a game where you have to get 16 badges instead of uh, 8, like every other Pokemon game. So. Uh, this is the Viridian Forest. Uh, for those of you who miss the Viridian Forest, you will hate how they've massacred your boy. The Viridian Forest is now just a bunch of trees. Um, and it's a little disappointing, but it is also, like, technically the layout. And also, like, yeah, that is exactly how small the Viridian Forest really is, like, if you halve the, the distance of everywhere. Um, so yeah, there's that. Uh, I feel like I should still go over here, because there may be some goodies over here. I love this music and the, the gold-silver kind of sound fun as well. Uh, are you being now? I work at Professor Rogue's aid. I had no idea that you were out here. Professor Rogue's lab is nearby in Pallet Town. That's kind of cool that he hasn't moved in three years as well. Ah, there's really like nothing over here. Okay. Um, there's like a house down here, isn't it? Oh. Well, Alexa, I'll take it. This tree can be cut. Sure. Alright, there's a couple of trainers down here. My bug Pokemon are tough. Prepare to lose. Oh, okay. Alright. So... yeah. I guess, yeah, it's... It's really weird, um this time of year, because uh, next week, in fact this weekend coming up, is uh, Thanksgiving in the US. And uh, Thanksgiving is a very interesting holiday for us in Australia, because I'm pretty sure Thanksgiving is a very specific North American holiday. It's got nothing to, to do with really, like, especially us here in Australia. Yet, we still observe Thanksgiving, Black Friday, down to Cyber Monday, as just a massive sale front. It's a, it's a, a strange time, and actually it's, like, in the same way as, like, you know, some people will cynically go, oh, Christmas gets heavily commercialized, but, like, legit, like, Black Friday is, or rather, Thanksgiving is, like, exactly that for us in Australia, because we are doing sales specifically named after one of the days of Thanksgiving, and we, like, have no relation to it whatsoever. That being said, you know, hey... That's, that's fine, and if you're in America, you know, hey, happy Thanksgiving. It's a time to gather with your family, have a big turkey. Uh, I don't know what else they're doing Thanksgiving. You guys go fill me in, what, what are you actually doing Thanksgiving? I know a bunch of mates and they're um, off to visit their family. Hey kid, I just had a double shot of espresso and I am wired, I need to talk to someone, so you'll have to do. I might not look like much now, but I was an expert at catching Pokemon. Do you believe me? No! <laughs> What, you little whelp? If I were just a bit younger, I'd show you a thing or two. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh, jeez. Alright, so if you say yes, what does he say? Good, good, good. Yes, I was something out of the ordinary, let me tell you. Okay, cool. So this is a Viridian City. It is actually the first city that you will encounter if you play, uh... The first game. You're starting Power Town, you walk north a bit, and you're suddenly in... Viridian City. Naming them good nicknames adds to the fun of trading with others. <laughs> Boy. The Sperry the Sparrow and Ratty a Ratata. Oh, cool. I really don't think there's much in Viridian City. Uh, yeah, this one's actually kind of weird. Viridian City Pokemon Gym. Leader. The rest of the text is illegible. Uh, and yeah, this is actually, this gym didn't have a leader until recently. A young man from Pala became the leader, but he's off and away. So this is actually, this is a bit of an interesting angle that they've gone at as well. So when you go up here in the first time in the, in the game, uh, Asa, how's it going? Um, oh, is it actually, like, there? No, it's not it, yeah. So, so when you come here in the first game, there's no one, or rather the door's locked and you can't go in. In this game, the gym is completely different. Hey, yeah, watching the stream live is always good. Uh, there's no one in this gym this time. And so, just like in the first game, you have to do Viridian City last. 
That's always good fun. Um, oh, just side note, by the way, I'm using a different provider for the chat. Uh, it doesn't do the fade-in effect, but... Uh, which building is this one? The trainer house. The club for top trainer battles. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hold on, hold on. I'm actually going to go to the Pokemon Center. I'm going to pull out my Arcanine, because I legit need the Arcanine. Oh, yeah, the gym in Cinnabar is gone. I wonder what became of Blaine, the gym leader. By the way, that's your hint as to where you need to go. Um, yeah, no, I I had a, um, an interesting, uh, like, kind of run with, um, uh, I, I've been using the Streamlabs chat for the longest time, and uh, I'd always have that issue where I'd have to just manually reset the chat. Uh, I don't know what is up with it, but it would do that. So I'm just like, hey, I'm just going to use a different chat provider. Uh, I haven't switched the notification provider up the top left when that, whenever I get a follow, but um, I'm going to put a hot dog up the front. We'll see what happens. Uh, at least I'm pretty sure this is. Yeah. Alright, so this trainer house is, yeah, this is an, an interesting room. So you go in, and this guy's like, Viridian is the town closest to Indigo Plateau. They built this place because so many trainers passed through on their way up to Indigo Plateau. I guess you can't become the champ unless you go all over the place and battle all kinds of people. The champion from Palette traveled to all of the cities and towns in Kanto. Woo, I'm taking a rest from Pokemon battles. Oh my gosh, jeez. Oh, they even give you a <laughs> box there. They hold practice battles downstairs here. Yeah. I'd love to see how well a trainer from Johto battles. So you go downstairs, and this person's all like, Hi, welcome to our training hall. You may battle a trainer once per day. Cal is your opponent today. Would you like to battle? Sure, please go through. You may begin right away. So this is actually, this is an interesting mechanic. Uh, I traveled out here just so I could battle you. You, yeah, you fight this one guy and you can fight him every uh, day, did they say? Yeah. This guy's got an interesting team of level 50 starters. So he comes out with Meganium. Level 50, it knows Poison Powder, Synthesis, Body Slam, Light, uh, light Screen. Nothing like too ridiculous. In fact, I don't think any of these Pokemon have like two ridiculous movesets, but it's an interesting team that's there. But what, um, what this, uh, yeah, you get to fight this guy every day, but what you can do is if you use the mystery gift feature, you actually can have a, uh, a random, not a random, but whichever, like, last mystery gift you got can actually send a different trainer to fight here for you. Or against you. So, that's kind of neat. Um, so now he's got Typhlosion, so of course we go out with Noam Boy. There he is, angry Typhlosion. So Typhlosion here knows Ember, Quick Attack, Swift, and Flame Wheel. Uh, it's really not too rough of a, of a moveset, but there he goes. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, this is, a, I guess, an interesting just kind of feature, it's just here. Yeah. Actually, that's one thing as well, is that, like, how many, like, weird little mechanics am I, like, just gonna uncover at the end of the game? Because, legit, like, I'm at 14 badges, I'm at where the last gym is, and all I need to do is just sail a bit south, and there's the last gym, or the 15th gym. Um, so I don't think there's really, like, too much of the, the main game left. I'm gonna probably need an extra stream of, let's fit in just an extra stream of bonus content, and of course there's a certain late game kind of trainer, which I think uh, people will probably want to watch me at least try and fight. Uh, here comes Feraligate, he knows Bite, Scary Face, Slash and Screech. That's right, no water type attacks on the Feraligator. Why not? Oh well. And no hold items, so... Still though, I guess the starter Pokemon and all at level 50, that's some decent experience every day if you wanted to do it. Ooh, ooh, that was a slash though. That's also kind of interesting as well, that like, I think I've been doing the Kanto part for five hours total now, and yeah, like, <laughs> this is nearing the end. This is actually like getting very close to the end, so. Oh, I lost, darn. And it gives you 5,000 bucks as well, which is actually real non-trivial amount. And then you just leave. You just leave like nothing happened. So, maybe it's a precursor to stuff like the Battle Tower, except it's not level fixed. You get experience, but... Okay. 
It's still neat. I like it. We can heal- we can heal your Pokemon to perfect health. We're not necessarily gonna do it, but... Yeah. Uh... So... I guess the topic of the week is... Oh, oh, I've got one last- one last, like, addendum of a previous topic. Uh, do you think it ever fails? Uh, the... Um, the Pokemon Center? Uh, in reality, I think it does. I think, like, in the... Sorry, not in reality, but, like, in the anime, I'm pretty sure they, uh... This guy gives you, uh, TM42, which I believe is Dream Eater. And I believe that's the same... It, he also gives you Dream Eater in the original game, so that's kind of cool. Um, I'm pretty sure in the anime, they have an episode where, like, the power gets cut out in the Pokemon Center, and they legit, like, can't heal Pokemon. I don't think anything bad happens to them, because that'd be a bit terrifying. Um, but... Like, I mean, I guess, yeah, they've got power failures, and they don't have UPSs for some other reason in the, in the, uh, Pokemon universe. There's a guy. This guy means serious business this time. So, here he comes, he's fighting me. Here he comes, schoolboy Denny. He's got Jinx. Here comes the hot doggo. I think this is the first time I've legit used him since he evolved. And he's just gonna absolutely annihilate, like, this Jinx. The best part as well is that I keep mentioning that, like, if you've got the badge, uh, of a gym, the type of that gym, your moves are a little bit more powerful. And fire type is one of the three types I have not gotten a badge for. So, he's still annihilating this. The Electabuzz is about to break out into a dance, I tell ya. Um, I guess this the other one is ground and dark doesn't get a gym in this game. So dark is completely off limits, so rip bite or rip any kind of dark reviews. And then uh here comes Magma, so yeah. So the addendum, the addendum. Uh I mentioned last week, talked a bit about that Grand Theft Auto Remastered trilogy, or the Definitive Edition trilogy, and how I said there's no- I, I remember saying explicitly, there's no reason why you cannot play the original on your PC. And the fact that these versions are not, like, not necessarily superior overall, let alone in every regard, means it kind of sucks that you are not able to get a version of the original game, especially when the rights of the music and all the stuff are not lost. The remake or the remaster version has the same music and the same, well, like, the audio recordings are the same. So there's really no reason that you don't get an old version. Well, anyway, Rockstar, uh, you know, who's who's the CEO at Take-Two? Was like, hey, that Bandai chap's onto something. So they decided that if you're a PC owner, you do get the original versions of all three games available to play. Um, I think there may be issues with the Rockstar launcher uh, interacting on PC. I think maybe that's also the case. Um, so these versions are just their versions. But, you know what? Like, hey. That's... That's a bonus. That's a give it. Because, you know, it's no cost to you, and it's value to the consumer. It feels like it's it's such an obvious move to do. I don't know why they never did it. Um, it's still... It's still a bit weird that you do have to pay... I think it's 80 bucks? It is still 80 bucks Australian for this definitive trilogy, whereas, like, it was... 40, I think, on Steam to buy all three games before this happened, so it's still a bit of a loss for the consumer that they're getting these inferior versions of games and also these, you know, the old versions that they can do whatever the heck they want with, and never mind that the new versions they run on Unreal and people know how to mod Unreal in general, so hey, we've got stuff like that. Down and out. Rip. So, very short route, nothing really to note. Apart from the Pokemon level 2, and you can get Centric for some reason, heading up after the moderns. Uh, yeah, yeah. So here we are in Pallet Town. Uh, hi. Red's been away for a long time. He hasn't called either, so I have no idea where he is or what he's been doing. They say that no word is proof that he's doing fine. <laughs> oh, mmm, mmm. Uh, oh, oh. Heading after. Oh, true, yeah, sorry. Yeah, the modders. Uh, also, this was back in the N64 tape. Hey! Playing on those N64, I tell you. Um, yeah, that's, that's one thing. Where it's like, 
Uh, have they gone after modders on specifically the Definitive Edition stuff? I know it takes to have gone after stuff like, um, not necessarily item hands. Maybe they did go after item hands. My kid brother is at the gym, wait, at the gym, wait, but he goes out of town often. He has problems for the trainers. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I haven't heard of, like, any specific stories recently, but it's definitely something that's happened a lot. Yeah, but you know, it's so good of you to come all this way to Kano. What do you think of the trainers out here? Pretty tough, huh? Not really. Oh, you're collecting Kano. Oh, the older versions. Oh, they got... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's go gift for all the... All the things. And he gives you a judge on the Pokédex. We've seen 197. Jeez. That is a lot. That is a lot. If you're in the area, I hope you come visit again. So there's 251 Pokémon in this game, but there's a handful of legendaries and other kinds of Pokémon you're not going to see in the game, so fair enough. Uh, oh. Keep sailing south, and I haven't even left the town yet, and I'm already getting... I'm already getting... swarmed by tentacles. And they're level... 34, by the way, which is crazy high. And the visual update. Ah, oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, no, I I do hate, and, and this is one thing. I, I don't feel like it's right for, um, for game developers to really crack down on uh, on mods in this way. Like, it's, it's definitely one where it's like, one, I, do they even have the legal, like, right to take down mods of their own software? Like, at least I feel like here in Australia, it's like, well, does the... Oh, no, sorry, not, not here in Australia, but I'm pretty sure in the US, it's like, as long as you're not getting around, uh, authentication and, uh, and distributing copyrighted game files, which is a, a technical bit that we're gonna have to dive into, but as long as you're not doing that, I feel like there's no reason or no basis for how someone can, like, take down something. Uh, one month before the definitive re release. Yeah, that's... that is weird. I wonder... do they do that for... I don't know if there's been any other occurrences. Maybe they did do that for, um... They haven't done it for, like, the downgraded patches, have they? Like, the downgraded patches still exist. I always find it's really, like, weird how selective, like, some of the season desists are. Like, Nintendo's in the same boat. It's like, you've got, like... I mean, yeah, you see these, like, fan projects come out, like, uh, the classic ones of Pokemon Uranium, um, uh, AM2R, uh, there's bound to be a Mario one out there somewhere that gets, like, taken down. And I'm like, yeah, I guess they're using, like, intellectual property, but they're also, and I get, actually, even better, none of those are, actually, I think Uranium is a ROM hack. But the other two are not, they're recreations, so I don't know. I guess, yeah, like, does a ROM hack, like, count as copyright infringement? I would argue probably not. Like, if you own the original software that you're modding, nothing that the person has done really utilizes, like, original code apart from, like, being invoked out, but, like, you've already got the original version out there. I guess that's the gray area of like, hey, if someone, like, I, I guess my analogy is like, say you buy, um, the sandwich is too generic, but like, say you buy a, a toaster or something, like, legally, no one can sue you for trying to mod your toaster to add more slots, for example. Um, they can definitely not, not give you warranty, so if you're having, say, for example, issues with the game, and it's modded, like, yeah, you can expect maybe, pe you know, people will just tell you to bugger off if you've modded it, but I also feel like, well, I mean, you can't tell off people for, you know, f for installing extra slots into your toaster, unless I guess that's the safety thing. My analogy sucks, but you know what, <laughs> hopefully you know what I mean, it's like, or, or if, actually even better, let's say you mod your toaster so you stick a picture of Pikachu on the side. Can Nintendo see you? Maybe, if you try and sell it and market it. But I feel like the act of you doing that, and maybe you telling others how to do it... I don't know. My analogies are terrible. <laughs> yeah, so... Yeah, at the very least, uh... 
it's a bit more of a more of something to digest. I don't know if they're necessarily good versions still. I've seen Vinny play an hour of Vice City and San Andreas, and I look at it and I go, man, you know, like, I feel like I'd just prefer the original. I, I don't really know of, like, anything that makes the version better. Like, can you free look while you're in a car with the right stick? Is that, is that a feature? Because if you can, then that's actually kind of neat. Because the original games, they don't let you do that. You have specific look buttons. You've got two buttons to look left and right. Press them both, you look back. And, uh, you can do drive-bys in San Andreas, and it's literally that. You look right or left and just hope for the best. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's another swimmer. Here he is. There you go, doing the dab. Good on you, Seth. He's got a quagsire. He's got the goods. I'm training up Chicky because I know Chicky's got like absolutely no, uh, you know, no hope in this gym. But still, uh, so yeah. So I guess uh, topic number one I've got is the Game Awards. Uh, it's that time of year again where uh, we announce what games are supposedly the best based on a panel of people that you may not have ever heard of. Um, I think. Yeah, let's see. Jury panel composed of members from 103 media outlets globally. Winners are determined 90% jury, 10% public vote. I I always feel very, like, on the fence about that 10% public vote. I understand that, like, you know, it's the internet. Things are so heavily, like, skewed by vote rigging. But then on the flip side, like, you know, all your, all your jury panel are media outlets, but you can definitely say, hey, like, there's a lot of, I guess, like, independent creators out there who, you know, you can say, hey, I'll give a very specific vote, and you can go with that, and you could probably arrange for maybe, like, a thousand of those people instead of select media figures from me media outlets. Uh, I always find that's a bit of a weird one. Uh, and also, all of these nominations, you're locked into whatever the nominations were. So if there's a game that uh, is missing from the list, uh, I will forever note that the Talos Principle never got nominated for a Game of the Year award. I will forever note that. Uh, just, just by the way. Um, but yeah, no, if your game isn't on this list, then darn, you can't... Uh, yeah, no, yeah, the Talos Principle didn't... It, the Talos Principle came out, like, very late 2014, so it makes sense that it didn't show up on the 2014 Game Awards, but it also didn't show up on the 2015 one either, so... Uh, and on the one hand, I guess I'd say, oh, well, you know, maybe they don't uh, nominate games that don't come out that year, but lo and behold, uh, Cyberpunk is on this year's list, and... Among Us was on last year's list, so... And Among Us came out in 2017. Remember that. <laughs> Look at this guy! Who are you? Well, it's plain to see that you're a trainer. My name's Blue. I was once a champion, although it was only for only a short time. That meddling red did me in. Anyway, what do you want? You want to challenge me or something? I hate to say it, but I'm not in the mood for a battle now. Take a good look around you. And if volcano erupts and just like that, a whole town disappears. We can go on w winning and losing in Pokemon, but if nature so much as twitches, we can lose in a second. That's the way it is. But anyway, I'm still a trainer. If I see a strong opponent, it makes me want to battle. If you want to battle me, come to the Viridian Gym. I'll take you on then. Whoop, there he goes. So yeah, so this is Viridian City. Uh, it completely died. The whole city is gone. Uh, and there's a rare candy over here. But yeah, no, the entire city is gone. And uh, all the landmarks here... There's a Pokemon Center. <laughs> that managed to say. It's not even the right place on the city, but... Sure. Um... So there's one guy over here. There he is. Hi there. I guess it's impossible to swim all the way to Johto. Uh, but yeah, no. I... I always get told about the Talos Principle, but... Anyway, we got the Game Awards from this year. Actually, yeah, what was... Did they do a best puzzle game in 2015? No, they don't They don't specifically have a puzzle category. So, I guess maybe... Maybe that falls in list. I would still stick in under Indie Game as, like, a loose thing. 
Um, this was back when, though, when, like, best indie game can be Rocket League, Axiom Verge, Her Story, Ori in the Blind Forest, and Undertale, which are, like, they're, they're actually rather pretty big for, for indie games, so sure, there's that. Um, I'd probably have stuck it under best narrative, considering you've got Tales from the Borderlands in there, I feel like, eh. So, Tales Principle is like, whoa, top shelf game. I love it. Will I play it on stream? Well, I'm spoiling a puzzle game, so it's not the first time I've, <laughs> I've done it, but, yeah, but anyway, let me run through all the categories, because I think this will be a fun one to discuss. Uh, I guess let's start off with uh, number one, and then we can start breaking down uh, the list. So the big top number one, the game of the year. It uh, goes between Deathloop, It Takes Two, Metroid Dread, Psychonauts 2, Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, and Resident Evil Village. Uh, this is a surprisingly solid list. I actually, I don't have any huge qualms with any game on the list apart from maybe some people have a notch with Metroid Dread. I think someone's going to get angry if there's no Nintendo game on the list, so maybe it makes sense that Metroid Dread is here. Um, this is also what happened to the Seafoam Islands. It has now become... One island. And also, this is the gym. He's just holding out holding out here. He's just sitting there going, ah, this is my this is my gym. You better like it. So He come in here, he's all like, ah, wah, my gym in Cinnabar burned down. My fire breathing Pokemon and I are homeless because of the volcano. I'm I'm a terrible person for laughing. But I'm back in business as a gym leader here in this cave. If you can beat me, I'll give you a badge. Ha! You better have Burn Heal. I believe he says that Burn Heal line in the first game as well, so... Uh, he's a bit more serious than other gym leaders, so... I'm actually surprised that they've started upping the game here. He starts off with Meg Cargo. It's level 45, which is like... Oh, is that like 10 levels higher than Brock? Oh well. Um, it knows Curse, Smog, Flamethrower, and Rock Slide. It's also Fire Rock, which means, yay, Water type. You didn't plan for that one, but that's okay. Now watch out if you've got a Water type, because he's got Magma. I know, right? But this Magma actually knows Thunder Punch, and that actually is a big meme if you don't have Quagsire. If you got anyone else, and yeah. Uh, he's got Thunder Punch, he's got Fire Punch, he's got Sunny Day and Confuse Ray. That's a good, good move, Comp. Just to like try and get that type of coverage. Unfortunately, I guess no one boy is too good. Are we really gonna have just like me sweeping all these gym leaders now? And then I'm gonna fight Red in, in like a bit and he'll just wreck me, so. And uh, last one, Rapidash. But it's level 50. It's got Quick Attack, Fire Spin, Fury Attack, and Fire Blast. Fire Blast is definitely gonna ruin your day, and Rapidash is very fast. So. You gotta deal with that, but. Uh, I mean, like, that's it. That is his, uh, his gym, so. Well, yeah, no, three hits. Beat the entire gym. I, I don't know, man. I don't know. Awesome, I'm burned out. You've earned the volcano badge. Ah. <laughs> Just someone down there. Oh my gosh, jeez. I did lose this time, but I'm going to win the next time. When I rebuild my Cinnabar gym, we'll have to have a rematch. D uh, yo! Oh, it's already over? Oh, sorry, dude. Cinnabar gym was gone, so I didn't know where to find you. But hey, you're playing strong without my advice. I need to win. Now, that's a fun take on it. I appreciate it. Uh, so yeah. Uh, you know, they're, they're all solid games for, for Game of the Year. Um... Yeah, I don't, I don't have any particular issues with any of them. Um, I would personally think, and, and I'm gonna be a bit cynical on this one, if It Takes Two wins, like, I, I hear it's actually a really good game. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna say yes. But I feel like the, the guy who, who directed the game, I feel like he's got so much, like, stardom out of the Game Awards, that I don't know, man, is there a conflict of interest <laughs> if he wins stuff? I don't know, so... And, and that's gonna be something where I was like, oh, is the Game Awards just here to advertise, like, a handful of these games? To some degree, yes. And also, the company just keep announcing new stuff anyways. Like, this is 
uh, in some regards, the second biggest general gaming announcement event of the year behind E3 in the West. I think Tokyo Game Show is bound to be larger in Japan, but I'll say in the West. Uh, so, yeah, they're probably going to play it for that. Uh, this also reminds me that, yes, there was a Ratchet & Clank game this year, and yes, it was a PS5 exclusive. It's one of, like, two PS5 exclusives that have come out in the year. There you go. Two games. That's a sad one, isn't it? We're a year into this console generation, and not only can people still not buy the PS5 or the Xbox Series X, although I guess the Series S has always been available, so... And honestly, the Series S is actually really good value. Um, but, uh... There's no exclusives. Yeah, I, yeah, there's a, there's a shortage, but still, just like, I've never seen it be, like, this horrendous for the entire, like, year. Um, the Switch was, like, kind of on and off pretty bad, I guess, but at least, like, the Switch would keep coming into an availability over time. Um, but yeah, like, yeah, that's kind of crazy, the, these new consoles. Um, fortunately for the Xbox, there's no exclusives. I, well, <laughs> I guess unfortunately for people who own it. Um, backwards compatible Xbox, yeah, like... And, and, yeah, forward-compatible Xbox One. Like, the fact that you, as an Xbox One owner, can still play the new Halo that's coming out very soon. Um... Actually, is it already out? It might already be. No, it's just the beta. I think it's coming out in December. Maybe. I haven't looked it up. Uh... But, yeah, you can you can play that. You can play the brand new Forza that I've been playing. Uh, whatever Xbox traditional exclusive games, you can play them on your Xbox One and your PC. I think that's the best thing, <laughs> given a shortage. Like, and that's actually, that's a testament to Microsoft's, like, gutsy strat that somehow worked out. They've managed to make a console that's got absolutely zero exclusives, and it still sells out. Because it's just a good value machine. So, the PS5, like, yeah, that actually kind of, does kind of suck if you don't have a PS5. <laughs> hey, just a little farther to fusion. Oh my gosh, this guy's gonna be let down so much. So, there's a handful of trainers uh, going off this way. And then, yeah, that's actually, yeah, like, that's pretty much every trainer? Because, yeah, like, once I get up to Fuchsia, that's every route in the game. I can just go all the way back to Viridian. And we've got one, one more gym to go. That's come a bit quick, hasn't it? Oh well. <laughs> Don't worry, I've got some more things uh, to do in this game just before I put it down forever. Dude, you got Cloyster as well. He means serious business. He knows his stuff. Too bad Cloyster's a physical defender. <laughs> uh... But yeah, uh, Ratchet & Clank is one of those PS5 exclusives, so I guess this is probably the hardest game for people to acquire in this list. Um... I hear Psychonauts 2 was pretty good, and I hear Deathloop was pretty good, although I don't know if Deathloop necessarily goes into Game of the Year territory. And yeah, Resident Evil! That's a game that I feel like, you know, has probably gotten some of the most media attention for possibly some of the right reasons. I don't know. Just like some very earnest, just meme potential. That's such like a great way to advertise a game. And they knew it. And they know that the lady's not even in most of the game. They, they still went with it. Good on them. <laughs> Love it. Uh, so... Oh! Ex how about I'll do a bingo card? Who do I think is gonna win this one? How about I'll write it down while I'm at it? Uh, so... My money is gonna go on... I'm gonna go on... Oh, it's a toughie, because I don't think any of them particularly stand out, like, against the rest. I'm probably gonna go with... It Takes Two! I'm actually gonna go with It Takes Two on that one. Um... Yeah. Uh, so the next category, Best Game Direction. This is almost the same category. It's got Deathloop, It Takes Two, Psychonauts 2, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, and Returnal. Uh... I believe Returnal is also another PS5 exclusive, so... Now we're in this list. I don't know much about Returnal. It kind of came out, and... I guess just, I've been a bit out of it, so I don't really know much about it apart from, I think, it's mildly a roguelite. I don't know, so. Malak is also gonna be on It Takes Two. I got nothing more to say about that one. Bass Narrative. Guess what's on this list? Deathloop. It Takes Two. Psychonauts 2. And then we've got Life is Strange, True Colors, and Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, I don't know any 
anything about the new Life is Strange. Uh, but I am actually surprised to hear that the Guardians of the Galaxy game is remarkably much better than the, uh, than the Avengers game. Um, so I, I actually am kind of glad that it is getting a bit of recognition for that. Uh, my money is probably going to be on it for narrative. Uh, I don't have too much reasoning why, but I'm just going to go with it, so... Alright, best art direction. Guess what's on this list? Deathloop, Psychonauts 2, Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart. That's right, I've read out Deathloop and Psychonauts 2 on all four categories so far. Uh, the other two are Kenna, Bridge of Spirits, and The Artful Escape. Well, I don't know anything about either of those, so I'm gonna stick with Psychonauts 2. This is, I guess, the other thing about the Game Awards is that, yeah, if you don't know these games, it'll be cool to see them win awards, and then maybe you'll play the games? I guess that's what they're mostly going with. They should- okay, what- what they should do, what everyone should do, is how about have a Game Awards pass. For like, ten bucks, you get to play two hours of every game. Every single game that gets nominated, you get to play it for two hours. They should really do that. Just- there you go. That- that will be such a great sampler of like, everything in there. Um... Do they do that for, like, movies or other things? Do they do, like, little sample packs? Maybe they just give you a bunch of trailers and call it a day. Uh, Alright, so here we go. Best score in music. That's right, we've still got Deathloop in here. Uh, we've got Guardians of the Galaxy, we've got The Artful Escape, Near Replicant, the 1.22474487139, and Cyberpunk 2077. Uh... You know, I- I might go with Cyberpunk on this one, I know someone's gonna go, ah, oh, like, Cyberpunk, but legit, like, and that's actually surprising like, Cyberpunk didn't go under art direction, because I feel like, if there's one thing that Cyberpunk does do pretty good, it's absolutely, like, thrown a bunch of, like, effort at its assets and art material and stuff. Going for score, I'll give it that. It's even- it, I think even better, it also incorporates some of that music into its world. Um, I guess just the fact that uh, Keanu Reeves is a musician, and therefore there is some in-game music that he plays. I think that's, yeah, that, that's gonna mean something. So, I'm gonna put my money on Cyberpunk on that one. Uh, best audio design, Deathloop, Forza Horizon 5, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, Resident Evil Village, and Returnal. Ah, uh, I can guarantee Forza Horizon 5 is not... It's, it's not amazing on sound design, or at least no more than other Forza Horizons have been. I that's a that's a weird one for me. So I, by the way, here we go. We reach we reach the top. I and then look at that. They fixed it. The roadwork is finally finished. Now I can go fishing again. Look at that. This guy wasn't left out. I'm all sweaty. So there you go. So now I'm gonna fly all way all my way back to Viridian. Uh, which one is the... the Pokemon Center? So... So who's gonna win an audio design? Uh... I kinda wanna go with Resident Evil. I feel like a horror game usually gets the, the easy kinda angle, but legit, like... I feel like it's probably got the, the best one, so... The best chance. Alright, here we go. Best performance. This is when we don't necessarily get the game, but we also get the actor. We have Erika Mori as Alex Chen in Life is Strange True Colors. Giancarlo Esposito as Anton Castillo in uh, Far Cry 6, Jason E. Kelly as Colt Vaughn in Deathloop, Maggie Robertson as Lady Dimitrescu in Resident Evil Village, and Oziami Akaga as Juliana Blake in Deathloop. I will have you know, I am unironically gonna go with Lady D. I think, hands down, you know, she's got a great personality in the game. Great. Hands down. I don't care. I'm going with it. Lock of the week. Uh, I'm gonna put Hot Doggo away because I don't think I need Hot Doggo for the moment. Um, and then I'll withdraw... The Flashfly. So... Honestly, though, no, like, the, I think this year's been a pretty solid year for, like, game performances. Um, although maybe some people still complain that Far Cry 6 doesn't feature the villain enough. Eh, uh, what, what are you gonna do? Put the villain in more of the game next time, I guess. It's, 
that's pretty much it. So. Uh, games for Impact. This is a category that I still have no idea what goes in it, but we got Before Your Eyes, Boyfriend Dungeon, Chikori, A Colorful Tale, Life is Strange, True Colors, and No Longer Home. Uh, I feel like I always hear a lot of indie games and Life is Strange all the time, so I'm just gonna go with Life is Strange. I, I don't know what exactly, like, wins the category in this one. Um, so, I just feel like Life is Strange seems to get the most attention, so maybe it always wins. Uh... Okay, here we go. Best ongoing game. This one's an interesting one. We've got Apex Legends, Call of Duty Warzone, Final Fantasy XIV Online, Fortnite, and Genshin Impact. As a meme, I always like going Fortnite, but I legitimately want to put Final Fantasy XIV on this list, because I feel like Final Fantasy XIV, like, has just achieved so much, like, I guess, like, traction over the past few years. So, the gym leader is a guy who battled the champion three years ago. He's no pushover. Give it everything you've got. Oh boy. Okay, so put down the game awards for a bit. How are we gonna fight this guy? Because this guy actually does start meaning serious business. First of all, I I think I'm gonna legitimately go in for... You know what, actually, I think I will need Arcanine on this one, so I'll back out for a moment. Um, but yeah, this guy, this guy's actually a bit of a bit of a weird one, because, uh, in the first game, uh, this fight would have been Giovanni, the leader of Team Rocket, and he'd have this ground-type, um, kind of team. Lots of Rhyhorns, Rhydons, Nido King, I believe. Um, and this game, Blue actually has a kind of, uh... He's got a bit of a, like, the champion from the last game redux kind of attitude. And, yeah, that's a bit of an interesting one because it means that there's no clear type that you have to go in against. It's actually just a real big mishmash. So, I'm going to send Fluff up front because I know he's got up, up front, but... Uh, this is when I'm, like, you know, I'm starting to go, hmm... How, uh... How, uh, far under level am I? I'm going to be significantly under level, but... I've got all those buffs from, you know, effort values, the badges are going to do me good. Um, now that I've got Blaine, I've got stronger fire type attacks, so the only attacks I don't have stronger are ground and dark. Which, by the way, you get ground in this gym, anyway. I don't know, it's just a thing, so. Let's go up to this guy, let's give him the good, so. Yo, finally got it, huh? I wasn't in the mood at Cinnabar, but now I'm ready to battle you. You're telling me you conquered all the gyms in Johto? Heh, <laughs> Johto's gym must be pretty pathetic then. Kinda, yeah. Hey, don't worry about it. I'll know if you're good or not by battling you right now. Ready, Jodo boy? He's a bit of a bit of a snarky kid, but hey, you know, it's good fun. So here he is, Leader Blue, the champion of the first game, and the gym leader in this game. Actually, I guess he's got a bit of a weaker team than he does in as the champion of the last game, but sure, whatever. So he comes out with Pidgeot. Pidgeot is very fast. It, Especially when he uses a priority move like Quick Attack. The other moves he's got is Whirlwind, Wing Attack, and Mirror Move. Mirror Move might be a bit of a meme move, but sure. Is was that a crit? No, that was just a regular super effective. Yeah, like that's what Mirror Move does. It uses your move first before you, or after you. Actually, actually, I think it, it's just based on speed. But yeah, it doesn't make sense when you go for the crit or going for the super effective. So that's okay. Ooh, Herc's getting up the levels. I wonder if I can get Herc to have a go in this fight. I, I don't think that's particularly a great spot, which is just a bit unfortunate. Um, so he's got Rhydon now. He actually he does have one one ground type. So he's got Rhydon here. It's got Fury Attack, Sandstorm, Rock Slide, and Earthquake. And that's right. I think Brock also did Brock also have a Rhydon. I think he had a right horn. Actually, so. It's definitely higher in the level, but, uh, I guess Earthquake's a bit of a mean, uh, not a very nice move, so. You're starting to get into that point where the, hey, the health bars are actually, like, way too big, and whoever decided to animate it by going down by one pixel at a time, or one HP at a time, ugh. So, uh, he's coming out with Executor, I'm coming out with the Hot Doggo on this one. Uh, he's got a clear strat that he's gonna try and pull off. Uh, level 58, he's got Sunny Day, Leech Seed, Egg Bomb, and Solar Beam. You can tell he's going for that Solar Beam setup. Unfortunately, he could also just set up Sunny Day. And no one else on his team actually tries to do the, the Solar Beam setup. So... 
Sometimes you get a fire type to do your, your solar beam setup, but... Ah, oh, how do you get burned? Oh, he's just going in for solar beam. He's actually just going in. Is he dead? Well, you know, that, that works in that case. Sure. Alright, now he's coming out with Gyarados. Uh, so... Like, I would love for Gyarados to just have Fluffer. I'm just gonna send out Fluffer. I, I... I don't like the type combo on Heracross right now. It's not really working out very much. I think it's because I don't have Heracross with a fighting type. Um... Kind of move. So... Gyarados here, level 58. He knows Hyper Beam. Oh, how many times have I cutting that thin, I swear. He's got Hyper Beam, he's got Rain Dance, he's got Hydro Pump, and he's got Twister. Uh, rather gnarly moveset for Gyarados, but of course, classic Gyarados, he's quite weak to Electric, so that's his loss, I guess. Uh, now he's got Alakazam. I never know how to fight Alakazam. So, I don't know. I'm just gonna send, um... I'm gonna send Hot Doggo, why not? So, he's got Alexander. It's only level 54, so it's not as bad as it could have been. Uh, he's extreme speed. Why not? Get one of them priority moves out there. Uh, he's got Psychic. Not Psybeam, it's Psychic. He's got Reflect, Recover, and Disable. Uh, you're dealing with just, it's an Alakazam. It's kind of strong, but it's not the end of the world. Oh, and he's fast! And he's fast! No! Ah! Rip Hot Doggo! Gets to be the first casualty in so long. Well, I guess we'll go out with Babat. Try and go quick. Absolutely cop it. Uh, yeah, what's going on with the wing attack? Oh, all right. Well, Babat gets a little bit of love in this fight. Herc, on the other hand, nah, <laughs> no love. Uh, last one he's got is an Arcanine. I know, right? <laughs> Poor Arcanine. So. Level 58, it knows Roar, Swift, Flamethrower, Extreme Speed. So two of the moves that I my nose, but not all of them. Uh, I've not really used Ice Punch on the no on boy. It's never really come up. Something that needs uh, Ice to take down. I think it's because a lot of the other ones, like, I'll, I'll have Electric if it's a Flying type. Um, yeah, I can't really think of much. Ground type, super effective? I'll just use Water then. Wow, he's taking it. He's really taking it. Well, yeah, he's he's definitely he's definitely a gym leader. So he's certainly like a step up. I mean, given that you know the, the Elite Four peaked at level fifty, finally we've pushed up to level fifty-eight. We've put that as our next like little ring on the ladder. Uh, but it's not too bad. What? How the heck did I lose to you? Alright, here, take this. It's Earth Badge. Earth Badge. There we go. Alright, I was wrong. You're the real deal. You're a good trainer. But I'm gonna beat you someday. Don't you forget it. Cool. So there we go. That's all. 16 badges in the game. And I've got so much time to spare in this stream. Do I dare take an attempt? I don't think I'm ready. <laughs> I don't think I'm ready at all to, to fight. Uh, there's, there's one last super boss in this game to take down. And uh, there's one last super boss is... He's got a level... Uh, what's his top level? It's 78, isn't it? 81. <laughs> yeah, okay. So... I <laughs> That's why I want to do, like, one extra stream, like, set up a bunch of things that I, I do want to do. But, uh, before, before you go up and you try and, try and do that, have another encounter, first of all. Uh, by the way, it's at this point that, like, a lot of people do kind of, like, call it as well. Like, you've got, uh, cause also as well, um, after you beat, uh, that super boss, the game just ends, it goes to credits, and if you forgot to save, then whoops. So, remember that. Uh... 
I was right in my assessment of you. Tell you what, I'll make arrangements so you can go to Mount Silver. Mount Silver is a big mountain that is home to many wild Pokemon. It's too dangerous for your average trainer, so it's off limits. But we can make an exception in your case, man. I've got to the Indigo Plateau. You can reach Mount Silver from there. And he's going to tell me that I've seen 200 Pokemon. Hey. Is there any good to finding more? I don't know. So, I believe Mount Silver does have some stronger wild Pokemon, but... That's the best you got. I think they're only in the very high 40s, which is, I guess higher than Victory Road, but I think he's still relying on just those kind of experience curves, and I don't know if people want to see me fight by that kind of stuff, so I'm going to go for the legendaries. Uh, but yeah, no. Nah, travel this way. I'm pretty sure there's no one down the bottom. No one's hiding down here. Nah. Yep, travel over, hop off a ledge. You go over here. Now, uh, I believe, yeah, we walk through here. Only trainers that have proven themselves may pass. Oh, but hey, Patches of Dreno, please go right. So this is where we go into Victory Road in the Elite Four. But if you go over this way, this is actually your lead in to Mount Silver. But just before we get into that, uh, there's a couple of trainers on the way, I believe. So, there's the trainers. Actually, I don't think there's any trainers. Ah. Uh, kind of awkwardly, I think you're going to need Waterfall as well. Wow, this this is a route? This is a, a mess of a route. What Pokemon can you find here just before I go in? You can find Ponyta, Tangela, uh, Ursaring in gold, and Donphan in silver, Rapidash, Dojo, Dodrio, and Sneasel at night time. Uh, you can also find Poliwag and Poliwell while surfing, and yeah. Okay, cool. I don't think I'm really going to get anywhere, so... Uh, I don't know where I'm going, hold on. Oh, gosh. There's it, Sneasel. Oh, my gosh. Jeez. Okay, I, I've got a plan. I've got a plan. Wait, no, that that's not it. That wasn't it. There you go. <laughs> Faded off because I was wondering. Anyways, how about I go in with the, uh, the remaining game awards stuff? So. Best Indie Game, we have 12 Minutes, Death's Door, Kina's Bridge of Spirits, Inscription, and Loop Hero. Uh, I want to go with Inscription. I, I was a bit on the fence of uh, Pony Island. Um, like, I, I, I liked it in ways, and then I really hated it in like some other ways. Um, I haven't played Inscription, but I do really, 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 really like the art style. There's a Pokemon Center. Who goes over here? This there's, there's some rando over here. What are they doing over here? Do you have all 16 badges, ma'am? Trainers who seek power climb Mount Silver, despite its many dangers, with their trusted Pokemon. They must feel they can go anywhere. Uh, well, I can guarantee I feel I can't go anywhere, so the cave is just up there. Um... Oh, really? Alright. At the very least, I believe you can fly to this Pokemon Center, I think. So, you've at least got that. Although, I guess you could just go to Viridian and just go across. So, uh, let's put away Hot Doggo and... Who else is my high leveler? Crobat? Yeah, sure. And then let's withdraw both of my HM slaves. Uh... Yeah, I was gonna say I've got the surfer bro as well because uh, he knows all the water uh, water abilities, doesn't he? Yeah, so I might need him later on. Have I ever used? I think I've used whirlpool like once. Oh well. <laughs> I 
So anyway, let's go over here. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go with an inscription on the uh, best indie game. We got best mobile game. This is a category everyone loves. Phantasian, Genshin Impact, League of Legends Wild Rift, Marvel Future Revolution, and Pokemon Unite. Oh dear, your family. Please don't tell anyone about me. I'll give you this for keeping my secret. And you get TM47. That's cool. That's it! You <laughs> don't even get an explanation as to it. Uh, TM47 is... Which one is it? S uh, another steel wing? I've got two of them, bro. How many steel wings do I need? Alright. So yeah, this is a ledge. Uh, yeah, let me, let me just do the fly. I guess not. So, I guess your best bet is to fly to Viridian and then walk across, because it's not really like there's anything on the way. But yeah, no, I'm gonna get 100% annihilated if I actually try this, so... How about let's get some legendaries? I don't know why I'm walking off to, to go do it as well. Uh, my money's on Genshin Impact. People still play that game. I'm just gonna say that. I don't know. I don't, I don't play Genshin. Um, why am I saying that as part of the mobile game and not best ongoing game? Uh, best community support. Apex Legends, Destiny 2 Beyond Light, Final Fantasy 14 Online, Fortnite, and No Man's Sky. Is this the definitive just No Man's Sky is gonna win this category every year now? Cause like, No Man's Sky keeps getting updates. Like, I mean, that's a- that's an ultimate redemption arc, but it's also like, man, you know... How do you- how do you beat that? I guess Final Fantasy XIV is the closest you'll get, but that's a game that legitimately charges people for expansions. Like, I don't know. So... Anyway, let's hop on the train, let's go back to Johto Land. May I see you pass? Hmm. And there he goes. Uh... We got best VR AR game, Hitman 3, I Expect You to Die 2, Lone Echo 2, Resident Evil 4, and Sniper Elite VR. I'm just gonna say Hitman, but I don't know anything about the VR space anymore. I would have imagined a racing game would have ended up in this list, but I guess not. So, yeah, that's a bit of a weird category. Uh, Innovation and accessibility. Now this one's actually an okay category because uh, I can note a couple of things in a handful of the games that are in there. So we've got Far Cry 6, Forza Horizon 5, Marvelous Guardians of the Galaxy, Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, and The Veil, Shadow of the Crown. Wow, I'm getting another phone call from Gina. How are you Pokemon doing? I always keep my hop up in shape. I go into Pokemon Sense. Guess what happened the other day? I missed catching Razadar again. Maybe I'm not very good at this. Bye, see ya. Sure, okay. Uh, do I even need to heal on this one? Probably not, no. Okay. So... With the rainbow wing that I got ages ago, you wanna go to... This building? Yeah! And this guy's all just like... Tint I was off limits to anyone without a critique's gym badge. Ah! A critique's gym badge. So you can go through once you got the gym badge, but then like you get kind of like memed on when you go- I've said memes so many times in this stream by the way. It's a real bad habit. Tin Tower. I was already Pokemon, I said it's a Roostia. I'm pretty sure someone walls you off when you don't have... ...the thing. So, yeah, this is kind of the same dungeon. Actually, I don't even think there's... Yeah, no, there's no... Ah, oh, okay. So, there's no... Pokemon in here, I believe. Also, do I have enough balls before I, like, try and really commit? That is a big kind of... I'm gonna go with it. Ah, oh, there are trainers. There are Pokemon there. Meh. <laughs> I guess it's not very easy to get lost, but still. 
And yeah, there's Ratata. And Ghastly. Oh boy. It's, uh... I believe this is a rather long dungeon as well. <laughs> like, legit, legit. You're gonna look at this and you're gonna go, eh. Eh. <laughs> anyway, uh, what other Pokemon are in here? It's literally Rattata and Ghastly, so, eh, I've got nothing there. Alright, what, what else is on our Game Awards list? Uh, so yeah, I'm probably gonna say Forza on Game for Accessibility. I don't know. Uh, I don't really have much to say about it. Um, it's got the one feature where you basically get to not play the game if you turn down the game speed really low, and or if you turn the steering assist and the driving assist, the acceleration assist, on such that you AFK the game, and you can do that. I, I feel like there's a certain, like, cut off when it gets to accessibility when you can just start idling. Like, legit. Like, some people, like, I don't know. I guess, like, some people do have trouble doing, you know, multiple actions in a game, but I feel, you know, at some point, if you can, if you can not play the game at all and still be beating it, uh, there's something going on, so. But, eh. You know, it's a game. Where am I going? Where am I going? Okay. So, I'll go with that. Uh, and this is when I get into... Okay, so we're in the, the categories now. Alright, this is when we start getting into just like a big overlap of just other games that, you know, have probably been nominated. And more than what was originally the case. Uh, what's the, the way to go up? Because that keeps going this way, and then I go up here, and then I'm just in the dead end. So, it must be somewhere in the top right. But it's not necessarily in the top right, so maybe it's in the center? I don't think I've gone down. No, I have gone down. Yeah, no, we're... <laughs> I... I keep seeing that, so that's gotta be something good. Oh. So, we got Best Action Game, Back for Blood, Chivalry 2, Deathloop, Far Cry 6, and Returnal. My money's on Deathloop. If that's the only one on this list that's gotten nominated for Game of the Year, then it probably is the best out of all of them. That usually is what has happened. Uh, I hear Back for Blood's okay. I haven't heard much of Chivalry 2. Other than it was an epic exclusive, I think. Uh, yeah, so I want to go right, left here and go to the center. Yes. All right. Uh, best action adventure game: Guardians of the Galaxy, Metro Dread, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, Resident Evil Village, Psychonauts 2. That is correct. I'm gonna go with Psychonauts 2 on that one. Ah, uh, that's the game. At least it takes two isn't on this list, I guess. Oh, I'm back in the center. Oh. Gosh. I... Dude, my... I have completely lost map geometry, I swear. Alright, uh, next category is best role-playing game. We got Cyberpunk, Monster Hunter Rise, Scarlet Nexus, Shimagana Tensei 5, and Tales of Arise. Uh... So not towards the pole, and not left, because I have gone left. Yes, okay, there we go. I figured it out, don't worry. Look at this wonderful texture. Uh, I'm gonna say Tales of Arise. Tales of game winning, that'd be cool. It's probably gonna go with Monster Hunter. It usually just goes to Monster Hunter every time. Uh, uh, best fighting game, Demon Slayer, Kimetsu no Yaiba, The Hino Kami Chronicles. Cool. Guilty Gear Stride, Melty Blood Type 
Lumina, Nickelodeon All Star Brawl, and Virtual Fighter Five. I feel like you gotta you gotta give it to Guilty Gear because that that is a game that somehow like has gotten so much attention. Uh, these warps, these warps, as if this dungeon couldn't get any more confusing. As if it couldn't even get worse, but no, there it is. Uh, so, yep. Special mention of Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl. Like, <laughs> that is a nice, like, follow-up to just getting strange attention, but yeah. No, it's a, it's a good game, I hear. Uh, best family game. It takes two Mario Party Superstars, new Pokemon Snap, Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury, and Mario Way Get It Together. I find It Takes Two to be a bit of an interesting one in the category, but considering everything else is Nintendo, my money is on Super Mario 3D World, because that game is actually good. I I really loved 3D World when it came out. I think people slept on it. And then when it came to the Switch, people stopped sleeping on it, so I'm like, yeah, okay, sure. Um, the Bowser's Fury bit is also good. I know, I'm skipping out on WarioWare, but I haven't played WarioWare. I also haven't played the Bowser's Fury, but I'm just gonna go off 3D World being a good game, so we'll go with that. Best sports racing game, F1 2021, FIFA 22, Hot Wheels Unleashed, Forza Horizon 5, and Riders Republic. Ah, uh, it's probably gonna go to Forza. I, I, I would prefer Hot Wheels being a winner in this case. That'd be hilarious. But yeah, no, it's, it's 100% just gonna go to Forza, which is, it's disappointing, but sure. Where am I going? Where am I going, I swear. Uh, best sim strategy game, Age of Empires 4, uh, Evil Genius 2 World Domination, Humankind, is Humankind even out yet? Inscription, uh, and Microsoft Flight Sim. I, I'm, this is a toughie, cause like, I don't even know, <laughs> like, what the reception to all these games are, so. I don't know. I, I'm gonna go with Evil Geniuses. No, I'm going with Age of Empires. Stop it. <laughs> it's going Age of Empires, okay. Uh, best multiplayer game. Back for Blood, It Takes Two, Knockout City, Monster Hunter Rise, and New World. Oh, okay. Okay, we're finally up the top. Which means... Uh, I'm gonna try my best to catch this guy, but I don't have... I know I don't have enough balls to, to really, like, do it well, so... We'll take a stab. There he is, he's just chilling at the top here. <laughs> so, greetings to... Oh, oh, he's on the cover of the game. And yeah, you can catch this guy uh, if, you, if you're playing Pokemon Silver. You would have gotten that rainbow wing at that point. And yeah, you can just catch the legendary of the other game. He'd be level 70 in that case instead of level 40. So, note that. But I, I was expecting it to be kind of strong, so uh, Thunder... You know, a Thunder Punch would be okay. Uh, Sacred Fire is a real gnarly move. What else does he know? I don't... Uh, oh yeah. He knows Safeguard, Gust, and Recover. Oh, he knows Recover. <laughs> Come on. Alright, so, like all great legendaries, I... Hold on. Wait. Someone's gonna yell at me because I didn't use Thunder Wave on the Snorlax last stream. Um, there you go, I remembered this time. I know I'm burned, but... Yeah, I'll take it, so... Uh, do you think I could get him with a tackle? I probably could. Wow, I could get him with a few more tackles. A bit too late for a safeguard, isn't he? Well, he's in the red, so I think it's safe enough to go on with the... Go on with the balls. Uh... Let's go on with my best chance one, the Ultra Balls. Be careful not to hit the, the master ball in there. I think he's got a catch rate of three though, so, you know, my chances are not very high anyways. But I don't know, I've got the status condition. It's half slow. Ideally this happens in the number of balls I've got. But, I don't know, I guess the game doesn't like me today. So, uh, maybe it's because I read out the games for multiplayer. No I didn't. So back for blood, it takes two knockout city, monster on a rise, new world, and Valheim. New world is legit not gonna win it now. It's no. It's it's not happening. It's it's rather unfortunate for for New World, just how they've ended up. So but now, yeah. Uh so my money is on um 
Uh, it takes two. That's probably gonna win it. Uh, best debut game. We've got Kena, Bridge of Spirits. I hope you appreciate me calling it Kena, Kena, and Kena at various points, because I don't know what it is. Uh, Sab Sable, The Artful Escape, The Forgotten City, and Valheim. Valheim legit has a crazy modding scene, so I'm going with, with Valheim on that one. Uh... Like he, he pulled off a recover, so I don't know, man. I'm <laughs> gonna hit it. Uh, so I go with Valheim. The last category related to games, and I, I'll leave it at this because I've legit got no idea on the esports categories. Uh, the last category is most anticipated game, which I, is such a cop out category because I swear one Cyberpunk was in this list for a while. Uh, I'm gonna read the, the games Elden Ring, God of War, Ragnarok. Horizon Forbidden West, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild sequel, and Starfield. Like... I, what, what do I say? Like, the game that's got the best marketing material? I don't know, man. I'm just gonna say Elden Ring, because people are a sucker for Souls games. And I just... I can't get into Dark Souls style games. I, I couldn't get into the, the first Dark Souls, and... I can't, like, drive myself into getting into Monster Hunter. So I'm... I'm just a bit dry on that one, but I don't know. So, hopefully, uh, the, these categories make you realize how incredibly out of touch I am with modern video game journalism and reviews and whatever. I, and this is me who has played Forza Horizon 5 and I'm like, eh, on a few categories as well. I don't know. I, I, I always feel a bit weird on the Game Awards. That being said, I'm still gonna watch it. Uh, it's a lot of, like, condensed advertising. If there's one thing that E3, like, the best part of E3 is that it gives uh, journalists and people on the floor the ability to play and demo the games. The Game Awards has never really been about that, and so everyone has to, like, nail it in a three-hour presentation. Like, you've got trailers, you've always, you've, of course there's like a time box or whatever, but it's like, what the Game Awards is, is this one thing. And that makes it real easy for everyone to digest. Where it's like, E3, it's like, you know, how many people heard of the game The Good Life. Like, I saw it, I don't know if anyone else saw it, because it came up in, in uh, the, the Japanese, like, uh, like, E3 Live at the, I don't know what the name of the, the presentation was, but yeah, no. It was a, it was a real interesting one, so. I'm not gonna get him, am I? I'll chuck the lure ball at him, but I don't think I'm gonna get him, which is just gonna be a bit unfortunate. Well, no, that's right. Get him with a surf! A good old surf. Uh, so for reference, by the way, Ho-Oh is fire flying, so surf's gonna do a fair bit. I, what is his stats? Oh, well. <laughs> that's not quite what I wanted to do. Oh well. Get him with a restart. Let's get let's get a catch on him. Come on. Uh, so yeah, what's his stats? 106 attack. 100. Sorry, 106 HP. 130 attack. 90 defense. 110 special attack. 154 special defense. And 90 speed. That is very very remarkably high. Uh, that special defense is crazy. Considering that surf killed him, that just that's I don't know, man. <laughs> No one boy is a bit too good. Is a bit too good. Oh dang. Uh and for note as well, Sacred Fire is the signature move. It's got a half chance of putting you uh of burning you. Uh so and and yeah, it's a hundred power, ninety-five accuracy. It's only got 5 PP, but I guess, yeah, opponents in this game don't care. They're just gonna go with it, so. Oh, he's a safe guy. He's got a move that just does nothing. Uh, so yeah, let's, let's go for the catch again. And before it happens, first catch. First ball. Well, no. <laughs> My hopes were completely, completely expunged. But yeah, I, I don't know, I'm on the... I'm always a bit weird of, uh... Of, uh... 
how the Game Awards works. It is the presentation is on the 9th of December, which means I have two more streams before the Game Awards as well. But yeah, the, the I don't know the the nominations came out, and I was like, ah, it'd be fun. Let's do a bingo board. So. For reference, if anyone wants to write these down and then hold my feet to the fire on them, uh, go to Wikipedia, go to all those categories, go like across ways and then down ways. Just the categories I, I voted for. It Takes Two, It Takes Two, Guardians of the Galaxy, Psychonauts 2, Cyberpunk, Resident Evil, Lady D, Life is Strange, Final Fantasy XIV, Inscription, Genshin Impact, No Man's Sky, Hitman 3, Forza, Deathloop, Psychonauts 2, Tales of Rise, Guilty Gear, Super Mario 3D World, Forza, Age of Empires, It Takes Two, Valheim, and Elder Ring. What is that? Like... 22 categories? That's a lot of categories. Some of these categories I remember last year, they just was like, uh, this game wins X award. It also wins Y, Z, W, and, and Lambda. To, it, like, they'll announce one game and then just say it wins a bunch of, like, categories on the side. And you're like, oh, okay, geez. So... How's that 50% getting burn chance happening? Plus, it's just still, still weird, apparently. Jeez. So, uh, the other thing I guess to note with the Game Awards, uh, Deathloop is in nine of these categories, Ratchet and Clank is in six, It Takes Two and Psychonauts Two are in five. Uh, I feel like, yeah, there's a handful of games that get, like, some over-representation than others. Um, in fact, I guess the, the, uh, nominations by publisher category is also kind of interesting because, uh, Nintendo have six total nominations and four of them are in the family game category. Uh... They have Metro Dread in two other categories, and that's it. Uh, meanwhile, Sony and Xbox have 11 nominations each, and then Bethesda, Electronic Arts, and Square Enix have 10. Not saying that, like, you know, it's a very Western-centric Game Awards, because it is, but it's also one where it's like... Yeah, I don't know how you really balance that out. I guess you just have a competing uh, Game Awards. Uh, elsewhere, or alternatively, people make their own kinds of game awards. I think that's what people used to do back, back when like it was the Spike TV game awards, because it was a bit of a joke, um, in some ways. <laughs> like, like I don't know, it kind of existed, and then like some people would go on, but I don't know, it, it didn't feel like much of a much of a show. It felt like just another journalist show, and maybe to some degree it still is, um, but. Then you'd have, like, IGN's Game of the Year, GameSpot's Game of the Year, and there's a handful of those where it's like... Some of those games are just hilarious. Uh... Like, uh, hold on. Can I, can I find a list of all the previous IGN Game of the Years? Because I swear they had a real, like, hilarious one that they did rather recently. I legit have one of those slideshow pages. Thanks, IGN. This is horrendous. I hate it. And I have to start from the end! <laughs> oh. Alright, I- oh, it starts from 2019. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah! That's when they said Overwatch was the 2016 Game of the Year. And I'm out of balls. Eh. Oh, not that one. Come on, man. I can't use the Master Ball. Even though I think- Yeah, no, actually. Don't use the Master Ball. Ah, okay. Well, done. Man, Ho has been very temperamental, so, um, yeah, no, Overwatch is, like, hey, remember when Overwatch 2, I'm pretty sure Overwatch 2 was a Game Awards anticipated game of the year. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, there's nothing Blizzard related in this list, is it? There's, uh, there's, like, one Activision kind of name, and that's, that's it, man. That's a bit of a fall from grace, and... Somewhat, somewhat expected, somewhat not expected, but... Oh, well. There's a bit too much, uh, too much politics in it, but all I'll say is, uh, man, you know, if those articles are real, that's rather scathing, so... But what do you do? What do you do? Well, I guess, uh, slightly think that when you were applying for jobs, Blizzard never got back to you? I legitimately did apply for a job to work- Oh! <laughs> no. I legitimately have applied, uh, like, a year and a bit ago. I did apply, uh, for a job- Actually, no. Sorry, it would have been nearly two years ago. I would have applied for a job at Blizzard. Um... And, uh, yeah, no. I got absolutely ghosted. I think it's because I'm not a US citizen. Uh, or have a visa. 
Like, I would get a visa to work in the US, but... Nah, I, I, they didn't get back to me, so... Uh, maybe I saved one on that one. Who knows? Uh, and that's, that's always a, a fun one. I guess I'm kind of glad I don't work in game dev right now. Game dev is a bit of a... It's a bit cutthroat. Do I, do I have a free reign to do another Thunder Punch, or is that going to overkill? Because Tackle is not going to do much damage at all. Yeah, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to mash A so it does less damage. Oh! Ah! What's the point? <laughs> I'll get him with the Thunder Wave, I'm just switching out. Oh, so... I don't think I really applied for any other game developers. I think I just saw openings that... at, uh... Blizzard and just thought, hey, cool. I could get a job at Blizzard as... as a... as an undergrad as well. Sorry, not an undergrad, as a... as a... Graduate. And then, uh... Yeah, we all know how... how Blizzard have gone, so... I guess one thing, like, and this is gonna be very aside from politics, if I was... if I was to... Uh... To apply for a job at a game dev studio, I... Feel like I would be very discouraged if the studio does not release their games very often. Um, or, or products, rather. Than games like it's okay if it's like oh they you know they release like patches jeez come on I want to have that low health uh so like yeah Blizzard Valve Valve kind of spooked me out because it's like you know I've been a bit too disenfranchised by working on things that never get released it'd be cool to work on something and then have people legitimately use the thing that you developed so. Yeah, that, that's one thing that gets to me. Uh, by the way, NVIDIA, if you're still there, give me a call at any point. Wink, wink. But, nah, but like, like legit. There's a handful of companies where it's like, oh, it's a, it's a dream company in the sense of like, hey, you know, they make products that I find really, really cool. And NVIDIA is definitely that one company for me, and that's a huge, like, chill moment. If they, if I ever got sponsored, I'm like, oh, geez, someone's gonna look back on this and go, geez, how, how faded was that? But you know what I mean? It's like, that... And not to say to idolize companies, because that's obviously, like, the worst thing that we could take home after I just was talking about Blizzard, but, um... But you know what I mean, where it's like... Like, companies are there to make money, first of all, that's the biggest thing they do. And then they make real interesting products to capitalize on markets. And the interesting products are the, the second cool thing, but it's definitely to make money. And that's fine. Um, but then it's like... Yeah, like, those companies that do make those products are that absolutely crazy. A game engine extension? Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, I really love to, uh, when I was doing all this, um, all this work modding, uh, Clone Hero, I really looked into, I guess, kind of trying to, and, and to some degree, maybe I could still figure this out. I really want to make a tool that lets you replace the in-game's texture atlas at runtime. And that's, a that's an angle that I haven't seen, like, taken on that much, where... Wow, there you go. Easy, easy catch. Easy catch. Um, I haven't seen people, like, really take it on. So I want to figure out, like, what's the best way to go in and replace that texture? Because you, yeah, the current tools work off reading the asset bundles. Like, if a game loads in asset bundles, I'm not going to give him a nickname because it's just going to go in the box. But there you go, that's how. Uh, I believe you can fly from here, can't you? And we can fly from here. Uh... Yep. Okay, cool. Uh... Runtime memory swap. Yeah, yeah, you can do... You... Yeah, a runtime memory swap might be okay if I can, you know, make the memory a bit more unsafe, sure. Uh, but yeah, no, the, the tricky part is that the, in this, in Clone Harris sense, uh, the asset bundle is not loaded or rather, it, it, it's... The bundle is already loaded before all the mods are loaded. And then the the texture is used in a scene... Rather than being, like, specifically loaded later. So you kind of miss out on, I guess, like, how it all works, which is a little unfortunate. Um, but I have the strong feeling that there's something you can do... Uh, 
like, you can inject something somewhere, and you might be able to replace the texture. And if I can figure out a way to do that, then that actually be really neat. Because yeah, one one thing that we've got in the the cloner space is that everyone opens up uh, Unity Asset Bundle Explorer and just digs right into the asset bundle and builds their own version of the asset bundle after they've replaced a bunch of textures, which is even harder work when you've got a texture atlas and that stuff has to be, you know, built and made sure it's in the right format the whole, the whole time. Um, and, uh, that doesn't, uh, yeah, like, it'd be really cool if you could just do that at runtime and not have to worry about modifying this, the entirety of the asset bundle, how about that? Um, so I believe I don't need a cut. I believe I don't need a cut, but I remember having a huge, like, pain in the, the Whirl Islands, so. Uh... Yeah, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure I don't need, yeah. I should probably buy some more, buy some more balls before I go in. So, I don't need cut and rock. Rather certain. Uh, but I am gonna need... Uh... Surfer Bro. Uh... Is this a team? Yeah, sure. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, let's, let's go to the Mart. Let's buy some... there's no Mar on this place, is there? <sighs> I'm, I'm, I'm getting those balls, dang it. By the way, I love how you can fly to the Tin Tower. Like, just the base of it. <laughs> so you still have to go through that whole dungeon, but... Welcome, how can I help you? Yes, uh, we're doing great balls, we're doing 30. 30 seems like a good number. Uh, but yeah, no, that, that'd be something cool I'd, I'd love to figure out. Um, cause yeah, that would totally solve, uh, like a lot of, like, headache that people have when they're trying to mod the games. Um, and yeah, that's a use case I can imagine maybe other games generically in Unity might go for. Uh, there's, there's definitely some more specific solutions that I can do for Clone Hero, but Considering I don't even know, like, what the... Like, the best I've done is, uh, when sprites are created, I try and swap in a different texture, and that seems to... not quite, and like, land things in the right position. And one thing I found that's kind of annoying is that the sprite object in Unity, it has a field called Pivot, which indicates where on the, the sprite, the center of the sprite should be noted. Um... And, uh... When you, when you ask for the field, or ask for the field member, it's in pixels. When you construct the object, it's in a range from 0 to 1. It, it's very bizarre. It just changes formats on you, just casually, so. Uh, but yeah, so this is the Wall Islands. This is on Route 41. It is just casually here, but uh, yeah, no, you need Whirlpool to, to get in. And very awkwardly, uh, you kind of have to walk around some things and swim a lot. And it's possible that some of these... Uh... Oh, I got flash. I got flash. It's cool. It's cool. There you go. So it's got cliffs. It's got like... Like I look at this and I go, oh no, I'm going to get so darn lost. So I'm in the northeast corner. Uh. Cause yeah, that that bit also like does that go somewhere? Uh boy. Where am I at? Bottom of a cliff. Cliff keeps going this way. Uh, I can go up a ledge, sure, I can go around. Alright, well, what, what's the available Pokemon? I'm pretty sure it's nothing more than, uh, Krabby, Zubat, Seal, Golbat. In floor one, 
Floor two. Floor three. And floor four. Yeah. And of course we're all in the mid-20s, because that's what Pokemon at this level all were. They're still so cool. I love them. Like a kiss from a rose. Oh, you do need string! Oh! I need all of them. I need all the moves. Or rather, I need strength to go back out this way, don't I? Because that's a that's a dead end. I've got no no hope if I were to use it that way. So uh now oh okay. Cool. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I've still been I've still been a bit on and off on cloning and modding. So if anyone knows me and sees it, uh, I'm on the southwest island, I think. Yeah. And um, I should have walked outside. Uh, yeah, if anyone knows me on the Clone and Hero modding, uh, like, it's still, it's still kind of on and off. Um, but that's something I'm kind of pursuing. It's... I would like to, like, streamline the way that I'm working through things, because I was doing another uh, mod which tries to kind of recreate the Gig Challenges feature of Guitar Hero 5, where you play your song and then it adds, like, an extra challenge. Uh, that it's just tracking, so it's something like, oh, like, whammy for 20 seconds on the song. So I was like, oh, maybe I can scan the song, like, as you start to play it, and go, hey, you don't need strength. Wow. I just, I'm on the other side of that boulder. Uh, but it's like, oh, scan the song, oh, like, you know, there's so many, so much time it sustains, and then it's like, oh, well, I'll compute a bronze, silver, and gold objective, and just try and count how much you're doing, and yeah, that'd be cool. And make it, like, deterministic, so when you play the same chart again, you get the same challenge. That'd be cool. Uh, but ultimately, I think the bit that kind of annoys me the most about it is trying to make a UI element that kind of looks like the, uh, maybe not the, the typical gig challenge stuff in Guitar Hero 5, but it's like, hey, let's, let's copy the star power meter and customly increment it, and I'm like, man, the, the workflow I've got is... Not very good. I think I need waterfall. Oh, I've got waterfall. Yeah. yeah. Wait. Ah, I'm outside again. Man, that's a massive dead end, isn't it? Pretty sure one of these islands is just full on, like, closed off as well, like, you can't even leave it. I'm gonna need a map of this, aren't I? Yeah, I don't know, you can, you can leave this island. You can leave all of them, okay. Yeah, no, I'm gonna get so lost otherwise. <laughs> for you. It's pitch black inside. Wow. Cool. Uh... I think it's over on the, the top side. Man, the world islands are not easy. You folks playing Pokemon Silver, I do not like... Like, yeah, Tin is a bit annoying, but, you know, it makes sense. This is like, just a snaky cave. I guess we, we've been missing a snaky cave, haven't we? And there's also this, the, the dark cave, that I haven't even explored. Uh, so there's a, yeah. For, for reference, I'll try and do one more stream, and then... I don't know, I'd, I'd, I'd do like a bit of a bonus stream if, uh... If fighting red is way out of my grasp, which it might still be, we'll see. Um... But I do want to, like, try and show off just like a couple of things still left in this game after one more stream, but yeah, no. 16 badges? Like, yeah, like, that's 
almost when the game kind of ends. The Kanto bit is a bit of a, not an afterthought, but it's definitely a bonus to what the game is. Uh, and that being said, I think the game, like just the, the Jodo bit, is like, it's a great kind of distillation of what Pokemon is. It's not too long. Uh, it's, it's definitely, I mean, it's... <laughs> It's a bit more of the same, but it's also more of the same, but refining a lot of it, and making a lot of it much more... Uh... I guess digestible. I don't think I can get out this way as well. I gotta go back up to that northeast corner, jeez. Man, they don't, they don't make it easy to leave here. Oh. Go on, man, sign. Uh. I guess just to circle back to the very beginning topic of what was I intending to do with the YouTube channel? I kind of uh, had, yeah, one of the ideas as well is to kind of, I don't know, do, do like a bit of a, not an intro to programming, but something I guess like help people, inspire people on that clone era modding, or maybe anything, because I don't know, I've done like uh, my Discord bot and kind of stuff like that. Um, I feel happy about my Discord bot, but I still need to like, do that work on, on uh, reorganizing it all again. I worry that I'm taking a bit too long and I'm just gonna like forget how it all works again, so... Uh, I'll get to it. I'll spend all this time over the... over the holidays really... really nailing that. I definitely found that, that like, you know... After... after doing like uni, I'd always love to like do programming as a bit of a hobby, and then after... like doing work, I'm just like, yeah, nah, like... My, my work is my work, and I put in a lot of good effort at work, and I don't want to, like, burn myself out of, outside of work. Such that I'm not doing good work at work. I don't know. So... Does that mean I'm doing something not productive, like playing video games? Maybe, but... <laughs> I don't know. I, I feel like I gain, like, some some insight to things with, with uh, games in some way. Even if it's a game that I've always played before. It gets me to think about things in a little bit of a different way, so... Alright, so... Where do I go? I guess let's go... Let's go this path. And this should put me on a higher ground, I think? Yeah. I'll have you know, people design dungeons in any... Any RPG. It's a thankless job. Yeah, okay, so this is... Oh my gosh. The wild encounters, I swear. Here's a question I want to know. What's the fastest Pokemon game that goes from stopping me from walking to a wild encounter to me hitting run? What is the least amount of time that any Pokemon game takes in, t in doing that? Uh, well this looks like definitely a room. Oh. Okay, well. Down I go. I think he's in here actually. So, I'm gonna save. I know, surprisingly, he's actually not that far from like some entry point, but you just have to know where the entry points are. There he is, he's just chilling. So, uh, am I gonna get annihilated? Very maybe. Let's have a go. Yeah. And here it comes. So, in comes Lugia, the legendary Pokemon of Pokemon Silver. But you can get him in this game. He's level 70. Uh, if if you're playing Silver, he'll be level 40. Um, his moveset is also different. So, for me, he knows Recover, Swift, Rain Dance, and Hydro Pump? It's a bit terrifying. He's psychic flying, by the way, so just note that. But, uh, his... 
moveset doesn't involve any psychic attack, so I'm actually safe on that front. Uh, his moveset in silver is Aeroblast, Safeguard, Gust, and Recover. I think Aeroblast is a special, like, a signature move for him as well. Um, what's with the Recover and Safeguard? I don't know. They seem to love it. Uh, let's get him with that Thunder Wave. Yeah, so he's gonna start getting me with those strong water attacks, but that's okay. Uh, actually no, it's, it's gonna absolutely annihilate everyone on my team. Ooh! Ooh! Cutting a bit fine. Uh, I'm pretty sure, and, and this is one I, I keep saying, I'm very certain that it doesn't matter what level- oh, It doesn't matter what level your opponent's Pokémon is, oh sorry, the wild Pokémon that you're trying to catch is, it matters the percentage of their health. So as long as I'm able to at least keep him in the low amounts of health, in that red bits of health, I should be okay. The trouble is he's probably gonna kill me the next time he takes an attack. And that can be Swift, it can be Hydro Pump. It's on him to just keep using Rain Dance all the time. I'll accept it. Oh, and you're gonna hear the beeps for a bit. Uh. Alright, well, at least I've got plenty of balls. Let's keep going with the great balls. So... Ah! And there we go. <laughs> Took the hit. Alright, so who's gonna tank it? Probably Chicky. Chicky is probably the bulkiest, well... Yeah, yeah, no, Chicky is probably gonna take this the best. Being psychic, uh, and flying, I don't know, I guess I'd just use Body Slam as a, as a return if he tries to recover. But, yeah, nah. He seems to not be liking the balls. He seems to not be liking them. Will he take longer than Ho-Oh? Maybe. Pokemon's always a bit of a weird one, because it's like, they do want you to catch these Pokemon, but they never make it that easy. Like, this is this is definitely inbaked into the game save scumming. They know that I'm that I'm doing it, right? They gotta know. So, well, he's he's recovered at a bit of a bit of an awkward point, uh, but that's okay because I could probably get him with body slam. Oh, I'm gonna be here for years. There's got to be a better way. Uh... Yeah, let's commit. <laughs> uh, so Lugia's base stats, again with the three on the catch rate. Lugia's base stats are almost the same. 106 HP, 90 attack, 130... That is actually the same, isn't it? 130 defense, 90 special attack, 154 special defense, 110 speed. No, no, there's a bit more in speed than it was before. So, let's get him! Get him with the strength! That 130 defense is gonna absolutely annihilate me though, but the special defense is higher! I don't have a plan! Oh no, Herc's gonna cop it. Herc's gonna cop it pretty bad. There's no stab. You get- you- you do get that, but... <laughs> You do have a Pokemon with 90 special attack using Hydro Pump on you, which is never fun. Come on! Come on! I just wanna- I just wanna have a good catch, like, opportunity. Maybe I should be using Ice Punch. Maybe this is where Ice Punch comes in handy. Maybe this is where everyone yells at me for not having anything to do with Psychic types. Keeps coming up, and I, I've not dealt with it, but... <sighs> oh, he's hit me with a Taylor Swift. So, I'm out, I'm done. Going to my next boy. Let's go back to Chicky. Ah, uh, I'll just I'll just try catching at this point. It's not the most perfect rate, but I'll have to do for now until he uses recover again. Why? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? 
Okay, okay, sure. So there is Lugia. It is said that it is that it quietly spends its time deep at the bottom of the sea because its powers are too strong. I always find it weird that Lugia is psychic flying. It's not water type. Yet, you know, you've got the fire type one, you've got him living in these whirlpool islands. The description says he swims, he knows hydro pump, and he's psychic flying. I don't know what's going on there, so. Well, that's that. Let's get the heck out of Dodge. How do you get out of here? In theory, I guess I could come out the way I, I came, but... Where's the fun in that? You want to find the secret exit. Imagine you got to the top of uh, Tintower, you didn't have a Pokemon that knew fly. You'd legit have to climb all the way back down somehow, which is almost as bad as climbing up. Uh... Oh. Oh. Ah! Fake out cave exit. But nah. There we go. Well, yeah, that's, that's both legendaries. Uh... So, yeah, now I've got to come up with a list of things that I do want to do left in the game. Because, yeah, the only legendaries, the only, like, big things left to really catch and see are the, the legendary dogs. Which we saw Suicune just randomly at one point. I have no idea how to actively chase down the other three. Or, or all three of them, really. Because I didn't even get the chance to catch them. But, uh, I know there's that. And I know there's red. I'll try and look up if there's anything else, but... I'll do one more stream of this game, because I do want to beat Red, and do want to have a have a good one beating Red. That'll be a, gr a great conclusion to the game. But with that, yeah, that's that's 16 badges that is almost on the cusp of putting this game down for good, which I find it's a little a uh, little cathartic, because yeah, that was and just uh, just circling back to the original topic, it's like you know when I was got a bit tired of doing videos for YouTube. Pokemon Gold was one of the two games, and this is, yeah, this is almost kind of the end point of showcasing this game. So, yeah. Anyways, with that, I know it's a little, little sad, but that's okay. We've still got one more stream. So, with that, I would like to thank you for watching the stream. If you enjoyed watching it, you can leave a follow or leave a subscribe if you're on YouTube and you can always watch the VOD unless you're on YouTube in which case you did just watch the VOD or you jumped to the end somehow how did you do that who knows uh I stream every Monday at 8 30 p.m Australian Eastern Daylight Time uh so I'll be streaming this game once more on the 29th of November and uh and I'll find some fun stuff for Christmas so I'll have a good time there uh I hope you all have a great time do your predictions for the Game Awards. That'd be good fun. I, is it is it gonna necessarily be accurate? I don't know. But, I, I don't know. If you got any, any opinions, that'd be good fun. Uh, it's not for another two and a half weeks, so you got time. Uh, anyways, with that, stay safe, eat your greens, don't stay up too late, and remember to not celebrate Christmas before Thanksgiving. Come on, guys. Why are you doing this to me?